Coming up, it's time for Mac Break Weekly, episode 187, our last pre-iPod show. We're going to talk about all the rumors, rumors about the iPhone 2, and a lot more. Mac Break Weekly is next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for MacBreak Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is MacBreak Weekly, episode 187 for March 31st, 2010. A stick between their legs. MacBreak Weekly is brought to you by Gazelle. The easy way to sell or recycle the used gadgets lying around your home or office. Don't just sell it, gazelle it. For a 10% bonus payment for your used gadgets, go to gazelle.com slash MacBreak, bonus code MacBreak. And by audible.com. To download a free audiobook of your choice, go to audible.com slash MacBreak. This is Mac Break Weekly, the show that covers everything that's going on in the world of Apple. And really today, there is nothing but the iPad. Nothing but the iPad going on. Starting from my left, Mr. Alex Lindsay is here from I the Pixel Core. I don't have an iPad yet. I just want to point that out. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to narrow it down. So Alex does not. Also joining us today from, the, uh, what, from Liverpool, England. He's so mm -hmm. excited about the World Cup coming up. I'm stereotyping. Mr. <laughs> yeah. Don McAllister. <laughs> hey, Leo. I could see it's you. It's good to see you from Screencasts Online. That's the one. That's the one. Yeah, and I haven't got an iPad either. And you don't have an iPad, so I, I don't... I haven't and, even got a cardboard cutout iPad. I've I don't have an it. iPad, so there's only one person who could possibly have an iPad in the bunch. What a good dog. What a good dog. Andy Anako seems right. to be making dog. out with a, a Dalmatian <laughs> with a tag on its ear. I'm going to get you a biscuit. You're such a good dog. <laughs> he's, very, <laughs> he's very patient. The bestest dog ever, Buster. <laughs> mm. He's You're a always there for me. This is, he's still good for us now because he has an iPad and we don't. Yeah. Huh? huh? I don't know. Huh? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> What's that, Buster? <laughs> That's right. I love you because you don't ask stupid questions. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Who's getting a cookie? You're getting, yes, you're getting a cookie. Go get the cookie. Go get the cookie. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, there you have it. Andy Anako's non-denial denial. Yes. Okay. Hi, good to see you, Andy, once again. From the Chicago Sun-Times and the <laughs> Celestial Waste of Bandwidth. Merlin Mann has the day off. He's on assignment. Looking for an iPad. Yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. <laughs> who do you think? Who do you think has an iPad? Do you think that David Pogue and Walt Mossberg and yeah. uh, and Ed Beg uh, have yes. a, Ed Beg have an iPad yeah. now? Yes, not that I'm bitter. They probably do, right? They Andy, an you're iPad. you're you're an actual journalist as opposed to those of us who play them on the radio. Yes. Do you think that Apple has seeded some of the premier press with an iPad so that they can get their review out? Buster. Buster, <laughs> I'm gonna have to. I, I'm sorry. He has trouble opening the jar himself. I'll be right back. No, Hang no, on. no, 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 no. It's oh dear. Okay, I guess it's like. I think, yeah. I think no words need to be spoken on that. Do I they, think right? it's like skull and bones. If you say the words, he has to get up and leave. It's in the Apple uh, NDA. So I'm thinking. I think he might happen to have one at this point. Could happen. I saw the videos. Have you seen, you seen the videos? videos? No, there's videos online? No. Yes, there's yeah. So there's videos. So, Apple has posted the videos of kind of like their how to use it and how easy it is to use. Um, and um, it um, is. I'm at the Apple site now. A magic and revolutionary pro a magical. Some training. If you, if you wow, that's that. an interesting selling point. It's magical. Expelliarmus. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Nothing happens. Nice well, you wait. Well, you no, wait until you have an iPad. Show. That's right. Good boy. Remember, there'll be more of these later on. <laughs> boy, good, it's so boy, good, sad boy. when a good man goes crazy. I'm sorry, Leo. Were you saying something? <laughs> nothing, nothing at all. Just looking at the uh, iPad uh, on the uh, Apple website. A mat. They, they. This is a new tagline. I don't remember this tagline. A magical and revolutionary product at an unbelievable price. So it's magical, revolutionary, and unbelievable. <laughs> hmm. So yeah. Apple's mm. saying that we cannot believe any information they posted on their site? Yeah, I really wouldn't use the word unbelievable in a slogan, <laughs> would you? Like like when they say how well it'll work 
in these situations and how nice the interface is. We should, we're not to believe any of that. No. There's been a disclaimer. They have legal cover it's now. It's unbelievable. Well, they say the price is unbelievable, but once you use the word unbelievable, oh. I think I think it's safe to not believe anything. So now they've got these guided tours online. This is what you were talking about. Uh. Oh. So which one? Oh ones? my so, God! You can drink uh, coffee while keynote. using it. Look at <laughs> now I want even more. <laughs> look, there's a mug. Look at keynote. Look at keynote. Keynote. Okay, this is the one. Uh, Alex says he's actually going to do his if, presentations. If can, I'm going to test my presentations uh, first. NAB. They work. I'm going to do my my, my, pre my presentations NAB off my iPad. So did you order the uh, VGA dongle? Keynote on iPad is the most yet. powerful presentation application ever made for a mobile device. Oh come on! The superlatives are driving me nuts. Up just for iPad. It makes it easy to create incredible presentations with photos. Incredible. Okay, so far we've got an amazing incredible and amazing. Just the touch of a finger. Look, I just you, I don't need him to say anything. Just, I just tap watch the to video. get started. Okay, we'll turn his sound off. Sometimes it sometimes it seems as though these are being narrated by Jets fans. <laughs> <laughs> this is so awesome! It's unbelievable. It shows you all of your presentations with a large preview. Mm, yeah, right. <laughs> do you think they do that? <laughs> They do like they did with uh, the iPhone and get really uh, s uh, big hand models to make it, <laughs> or rather, you'd want a small hand model to make it look bigger, right? Yeah, like, oh, uh, your hands are too big. <laughs> On the iPhone, they had big hands to make it look smaller. Mm -hmm. Just shows you, you get, how things the other, have changed. The other question I would have is that they don't really have to give this actor like a working thing, they could just give them a blue screen mock up or a, a square and simply say, I want you to. Start your finger there and drag it down there. Then I want you to tap that and tap that there. I'm, I'm, I'm always curious about how these videos get produced, given the level of secrecy that Apple keeps this device under. You know, it's it's one of those things that, I mean, we do a lot of these, um, this kind of stuff. This looks and so clear and crisp. Very, it would be very mm -hmm. painful. It would definitely be possible at, with the right budget to do any of this stuff, um, you know, in post. But uh, if I could, I would do everything I could live. to make it work live. But how can they make it look that good? It's true. It just, well, you could do it. You could do it. The problem that you get into is what you're going to be afraid of is that it isn't the it's way gonna, I animate it. It's not going to match won't, his hands. Won't, won't, well, the way I animate it won't be identical to the way right. it actually works. And then, you know, people will be like, rant, rant. So it's easier to, uh, you know, get. This got, is really cool. You've got to get this real. So you want to resize it here, and then you tap that one, and it automatically sizes them the to same. To the same? Size. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I was okay. like, I there, so there's a lot of little features in there that are better than Keynote. And I then this is, I, I, I do a lot in Keynote. So I, I, um. It sounds like people should watch these videos because, I mean, I mean, who would have discovered yeah. that? Yeah. No, no. I, there, look at this. Oh. 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 <laughs> touch is a unique interface, and uh, Apple's never done touch before. And Except for on the iPhone and iPod Touch. Right, but not on a desktop. And so to see I, Keynote uh, with a touch interface really kind of shows uh, yeah. what yeah. touch can I mean, do. I, I was watching this today, and the thing that, that really amazed me, and I've, I've seen the demos before, but it, it just looks so advanced compared to a Mac. Even though it's a simpler idea, you know, using your fingers and, and just manipulating stuff with your fingers, it actually seems more advanced. Yeah, It's simpler, but yeah. more advanced. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm sort of wondering if people start using the iPad, whether or not, you, you know, you would imagine that there'll be a halo effect and they'll go, you know, they want to switch to the Mac. But actually, and then they'll be disappointed. To the Mac is actually, a, a, mm. it could be a downward step. Because, you know, they've well, got this... Uh, do this they have to do... So maybe a conspiracy theory here, the reason we haven't seen MacBook Pros is because they will be touchscreen and they're waiting until... Because if they made it touch, then they could put these features into... Uh, you know, they have to have multi-touch on the screen, right? I, I don't know. I mean, the, 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 I mean, Apple doesn't do things in a, ha a half way. I mean, they had so many opportunities to do a tablet Mac that just that was just simply, we're going to repackage a MacBook right. in a tablet in a touch interface. They didn't do uh, it. And we're not going to do that. So... I, I don't know. If they if they ever did it, I, mean, I really think that right. it really does look like they have two different product lines going Conspiracy on Conspiracy theory <laughs> yeah. number two. They Yeah, they have two product lines, and one is going to slowly eclipse the other, and it's not the one we want. No, I, I think absolutely that the, the touchpad, the iPhone and the iPad is the future of Apple. I think that um, their desktop Mac, I, I think most of us will have a, a long time to get to play, you know, continue to use our Mac Pros and our MacBook Pros and everything else. And But I think there's maybe, you know, uh, 10, maybe a 10 year cycle before uh, we're mo more moving towards this. I think this is really the beginning of a new kind of computing, and I think it is the future. 
Only the, vi the video definitely makes it look like this works far better than any Android device I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I just, I have no confidence really in their ability to get any, to, in, in, uh, in Google's ability to translate this interface from something that is simply functional and practical to something that really, really works exceptionally well. I think, I think they've, this is the price of settling. How about you, uh, um, Don? You do screencasts online. You do a lot of yeah. Mac screencasts. Mm -hmm. uh, I can imagine you looking at this saying, hmm, this would be a oh, nice, can't wait. <laughs> yeah, nice little <laughs> feature. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, can't wait. I mean, there's a technical thing I need to get over as to how we actually capture the video. Right. Um, I'm hoping I can do that with a hardware device so that I can actually capture the video uh, coming out of the machine. But until we actually get one and we can understand, you know, how, oh, how that's going to work, we can do that. I don't know whether so, you're going to be able to see the interface. That's the thing that I'm not sure yeah. of. It, it appears yeah, that I ordered a... that VGA dongle. It's going to arrive uh, Saturday when my iPad mm -hmm. arrives. Believe me, first thing I'm doing is plugging it in to see what I can get. I don't out think you're going to see the interface. I think what you, you're, you I think, think, I think what's going to happen is, is that it's going to be applications can output an output a function. Every time we've seen them connect it to the a TV, there's a diff, there's something different on the iPad than there is on the TV. So I don't think it's ever mirroring the TV. I mean, okay. I, I, so when you were looking closely at mm -hmm. Steve's presentation, there was something else on that thing. Every time he hit it it, 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 you know, it was, it was, it's sending something different. Like when you watch the keynote one, what it does is it sends the presentation forward, but they're seeing something completely, you're, you're seeing uh, the controller. Um, on your, well, but that you can do with keynote anyway, which is a, uh, you know, I mean, yeah, I don't but know I, how I, you would I, do it on a, I don't think it's mirroring. I don't think it'll mirror the interface because the iPhone mm -hmm. doesn't mirror the interface. And, um, but the iPhone doesn't have video out. They don't uh, have that dongle. You should be able to do video out, I think, on it. Yeah, yeah, you can. You they can don't, they a, sell an, out of uh, it. They sell a dock to VGA. Uh, I believe so, yeah. Oh, that's news to but me. But it doesn't do that. But, don't it, think but I, it like plays your videos. The, the iPhone one isn't a VGA no, dock. No, no, it's, it's no, a little plug. It's, it's, it's a plug that goes on the analog, top, yeah, yeah. which analog, is, which right, is going to have, it's, that's also available on the iPad. This is something different. This is a dock right. connector to VGA. And so the real question is, what are we going to see? Andy, you've got one. What, what do you think? <laughs> Moving right along. <laughs> let, 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 I keep let, trying. Let, let, I keep let trying. Me put, let, me, let me put it like. Let me put it this way. I'll, I'll I'll explain something very very carefully. That I think that as soon as I say this, everybody will understand the correctness knowing of of this statement, knowing me very very well. Uh, two things. Number one, either I have one and I don't. If I didn't have one, especially like four days before the release, I really want people to think that I have one because if they think I don't have one. That's, That's not as fun as people thinking that yeah. I have one. It makes yeah. me look like a really big guy if I if I right. if I make right. people think that I have one. Number two, I make this pledge to everybody, you know, everybody in this conversation, all these listeners and all these viewers that I guarantee you that, you know, the moment that I A, I have an iPad, the moment that I'm free to talk about having an iPad, which may not be both true until April third, I'm gonna be such a total about it. <laughs> you, I mean, I if if I if I had the ability to like any time before the release date on Thursday, you know, prove that I have an iPad and other people don't. You will see me. I'll I'll, I'll make like an iPad cod piece and march down <laughs> the middle of the street, singing like a very song of I have when you don't. I have to do don't. I am that small and petty, not cod piece related, but I mean just in in terms of ego. So yeah. So you again, just, I, 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 I'm I'm pr I'm perfectly happy with people believing that I have one. Because again, if I don't have one, doesn't that make me look good? So, I do have to admit it's going to be very hard. Oh, oh, oh! Look, oh, National Geographic. I thought he was going to make the uh, the little National Geographic icon that we were going on and on about. <laughs> he didn't. He didn't. So, Did has you know, anybody watched these videos the and learned anything from them that we didn't know before? I learned how mm -hmm. to, how to um, scale two images. Yeah, that's together. cool. I was like, yeah, yeah. Rah, rah, rah. Yeah, I was glad to see the presentation um, in keynote that you do have a mini presentation mode, so a presenter's mode rather, although it's quite simplified uh, compared to keynote but did you notice at the beginning of that one how easily he picked it up i think that's going to be a, a crucial selling factor as well and it, as it seemed to levitate as well to be honest wait a minute it jumps it into his hand let's watch that yeah. again it's, it's, it leaps it's, into your it's, hand okay there it is there's the cup of coffee and now watch Woo! it just, Whee, it's just with, almost like one finger he lifted that. that's right that's right cold fusion possibly light <laughs> at, an, at, a, at an unbelievable cost. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Uh, with an amazing okay. See, there's, 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 there's no audio in this. You can't like hear like the like the, the hover the hovercraft <laughs> fans lifting it up. <laughs> probably, so going back to the um, sorry, Andy. Going back to the unbelievable price. Um, we still don't believe it here in the UK because we still haven't got a price for it in the UK. We're still um, priceless and release dateless as well. They just say it's the late April. 
Right. Um, but still no price. And uh, I think I read somewhere yesterday that they're not actually going to uh, announce the price until the release date itself. So there's a possibility that we won't even be able to pre-order it over here. So we're just going to have to get 10 up at the store and buy it when it's uh, released. Yeah. Which is a bit of a shame. There's, there's some, there's some uh, like online columnist in Australia that is going to be acting as an iPad mule. <laughs> that he's going to be, he's going to be at the, he's going to be at the Fifth Avenue store buying as many as he can possibly carry back to Australia. He's already checked with customs that it's okay for them to him to bring like 12 iPads back. I think, I think the last, last I checked, he's had orders for 14 and was cutting it off there. Wow. So he's going to be having wow. this huge brick of iPads on the way back. Well, I'll meet him at the uh, at the Fifth Avenue yeah, store. No that's kidding. Morning as well. It's 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 a fun it's a fun bit of roulette because between the American economy and the UK economy, it's hard to know who's going to get screwed on the exchange rate by the time you actually buy it. So, this this uh, it's uh, boy, it looks desirable. Oh, there's a little video playing back. Mm -hmm. That is one hell of a shin. Oh, baby, oh. more shin, please. Yeah, nice shin, fella. He's wearing uh, Steve's blue jeans and black turtleneck. Now you do realize with all these videos that that you can't see it, but between each person's leg is a huge stick, a huge <laughs> hole that they hey, hold. Hey, hey, it's <laughs> hold on <Pulsing>. there! <laughs> oh. No, the, the, if you look, the the actual the iPad itself doesn't move; it's permanently fixed in in that position. And even when they rotate, oh, it you're rotates right. The oh, you're right. So See, they must have actually uh, secured it with some sort of jig. That's hidden by the iPad and the uh, the legs. You're of the absolutely presenter. right. Here's see. Here's a guy because of screencasts online who knows, who knows. Yeah, look at it. It's, it's like even a rotating uh, and head. See, it moves. It does move slightly, but there's no way you can hold it that steady um, just with your normal hands. Uh, it's more noticeable in some of the other ones when it's it's absolutely rock steady while they're actually showing you it. Right. I think at one that. point it actually takes both hands off <laughs> to move. This, this almost looks. <laughs> this guy, how are they doing it? Maybe uh, maybe he did it for real, and then they somehow. Add, uh, a yeah, like like maybe maybe what, what they did since since we since we know that because of the uh, the the keynote demo in January there's somewhere there is the ability to at least wire up one of these so that it can send it's it can mirror its output elsewhere. Oh, maybe they shot it for real. Go. They captured the the video and then they simply put the video back in underneath. There you yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. Well, can you do Alex that without the with the hands? Uh, and that you could be? theoretically, I mean, you could shoot this with an with 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 a, a display if you lit it perfectly. I mean, it could be a lot of light on him. And you, you, right. could, you could theoretically set it up so that it would look like that. And but look how steady the uh, the, the surface, of the of the pad itself is. I don't. I mean, who cares? Okay, moving on. Because I mean, after all, that's <laughs> not the most important issue here. Uh, what is the most important issue? Uh, that it's coming out on Saturday. Coming out on Saturday. Uh, You're getting two. Four. <laughs> <clears throat> I ordered two, and one of my staff ordered two. Uh, we had them shipped here. I'm hoping, uh, you know, some people have already gotten their shipping announcements. Let me see if I've gotten anything from Apple today. I'm going to the store. Yeah, you can't do that now. You know, if you order now, you get it. Oh, says, no, no, I mean, don't I ordered, come, don't come till I, April 12th. I have an appointment. Yeah, I was I was really pleased. I was in uh, New York last week, and of course, I had to make a detour to the Fifth Avenue Apple Store because I felt as though if anybody was already camped out like a week and three or four days in advance to get their iPad, a device that could have been delivered free to their door exactly that morning. I, I, I would have to find out something about these people because these people need to be marketed to, marketed to with extreme prejudice because these people are, these are absolute, these people would be absolute die, you know, die hard, hardcore fans. Yeah. But, I, you know, no I, one was there, thank, thankfully, though. I guess, I, I guess I'm not going to have to go to the store because looky here, uh, delivers by April 3rd iPad Wi-Fi 16 gigabytes. Delivers by April 3rd. Exactly, exactly. So many people are now saying, bye. I gotta, I gotta <laughs> could be April 2nd. Could be. Well, people are getting shipping notices that they're going out. Yes. I mean, it could theoretically get here earlier than let me April track. 3rd. Let me track this shipment. But haven't they done this before? Yeah, they, they did it to me every every year they do this to me. Because they don't in the depot yeah. and then release it on they the call, They call FedEx and say, you know that thing you've got? Tracking number. I could pre-sign for it. Oh, it's UPS. Shipped on March 29th. So they're gonna. I wonder where it was shipped from. Let's where see. is it? Can you track it? Is it just sitting in a factory? Is it sitting? Uh, Can we rob? It's in Louisville. It was shipped ah. from Shenzhen, China. Yeah. China. Uh, Three twenty nine. It arrived in Louisville. Louisville, and then UPS internal activity is going on right now. <laughs> 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 that means, ooh, look at Leo's iPad. This is great. Let's make sure there's no <laughs> drugs or furs smuggled inside of this iPad. So we if have everyone to make wants sure to get some, if everyone wants to get some iPads. Louisville, Kentucky turns out the place to go. Look at status exception. Your shipment 
is currently within the UPS network. However, an unforeseen event has occurred, which could result in a change to the scheduled delivery date. Like Steve said, don't give it to him yet. So it is currently as of 3.30. Is that today? What day is today? 3.30, right? It is. It is, it is yeah. currently sitting in Louisville. Along with about probably 240,000 other. How many do you think the pre orders, uh, nobody knows, obviously sold out because April 12th is the now the uh, ship date. But how many, I guess, is the question, how many did they make ahead of time for that first? The rumors were 300,000. That's what I heard too. And that might match kind of well with what the bloggers are saying. There's that blogger who used the serial numbers and calculated pre orders of around 240,000. Yeah, it's difficult to say, though, isn't it? I mean, and Apple is so savvy that they wouldn't actually give you sequential serial numbers, and they'd, they'd, they'd find out some way of, of, right. of, you know, making sure that you couldn't actually work it out. Um, but um, the, the, it, it still amazes me just how many they will have shipped, though, to people that are sort of taking, still, still taking everything on spec. You know, we, we still haven't touched it, although some, I, I defer to those who have touched it in the room, but, uh, you know, everybody else, there's only a couple of hundred people that have, you know, we're just taking it on spec. But uh, Here's yeah, the worst part know. is I would have ordered one I would have ordered an iPad without seeing one. If Apple had said, you know, we, you know, you have to order it six, it'll come in six months, and give us the money, I would have put the order down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, because I mean, you know that you you just know. I, I mean, I know how much I use my iPhone. I know it's you know if it's just a bigger iPhone to you, me, I'm you could be disappointed. Can, but you know, I'm glad I have a I Newton. I'm glad I have a freaking Newton. I'm glad I had a, had a freaking Cube. Right. I've. I mean, I, I would have, if I'd had a Lisa, I would have been happy. So you know, even the flops. I'm trying to think of what is the worst flop. Is there anything Apple's made that was such a flop that you you wouldn't be just kind of glad to have one? Just those, those are the earphones, the in ear. Oh things, yeah, those the are crap. the, the uh, iPod Wi-Fi Hi-Fi. Yeah, those, <laughs> I have a Hi-Fi. Oh. It wasn't that bad. That wasn't it wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. Yeah, but the, but the he mind. headphones were crap. Ten hours battery life. Do you think? Could it be? Uh, so what's our guess for by the end of the year? How many will Apple sell? I have. Uh, I'm in a bet with John C. Dvorak, and a fella in the chat room that uh, five million, which is you're saying five million, which is I thought was very high, and it would be very high for any consumer electronics device. But now the uh, analysts are saying, as as some analysts are saying, eight million. I'm going to say eight point six million. Jeez, eight point six million. Mm -hmm. That's my call. Yeah. You got to be exact. Eight point six. Seven. Seven point three. I guess I'm going <laughs> to win that bottle of wine from John. Yeah, how about you, Andy? <laughs> I don't see. I don't know. That it's such a it's such a game of incomplete poker. Uh, I'm I would guess low millions. I'd be pleased, but and but surprised if it did more than five, only because this isn't like this. This isn't like the. Uh, it's it has an advantage that the iPhone doesn't have in that you buy it and then you're out and you're done for five hundred bucks, no contract. But it has a disadvantage that the uh, d that the iPhone has but it doesn't have, which is the fact that people can't people know what a phone is and people know that they need a phone. People don't know what an iPad is, and they don't necessarily know that they need an iPad. So, but I, I, I think I think it's gonna, I think it's going to take a little while before they see enough of these in the field. Uh, I mean, Alex and I are both in the same boat, where we are going to be on a plane on April fourth with iPads, uh, pretty much sure that we will not get a lick of sleep or a lick of our own time because we're going to be giving iPad demos. Like, <laughs> at, yeah, at that's the thing. The drool feet. factor on this is very high. I mean, I, I'm going to be on like six flights the following week. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, according to Mashable. Asian suppliers have revised their shipping forecast. Actually, this is according to Morgan Stanley's Katie Huberty. Asian suppliers have revised their shipping forecasts for the iPad. They now expect to ship between 8 and 10 million, not in the first year, but by the end of 2010, in the first seven months, six months. And I, and I do think that if those, if those numbers turn out to be correct... Uh, we really look are looking at a real revolution in computing. A million a month, basically, they're saying somewhere around there, maybe more. We 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 have we have a we have a guaranteed revolution in that so many companies are getting behind this. There is not a major mobile computing manufacturer that is not does not have a plan to do some sort of a slate or some sort of a tablet. We're gonna have Windows devices. We're gonna have Android devices, and now we're gonna have an Apple device. So even if people don't find that the iPad is to their fancy, the next time they have a few hundred bucks to spend on a computer, they now have an alternative other than a netbook. Now they have this very, very nice little device that all kinds of different companies are going to start to support. You know, when, when I get when I get older, my my uh, when my son actually, you know, and he's six or seven years old, I'm going to be like, yeah, back when back when you were a baby, they used to have these things <laughs> called keyboards, and you. Would, I like, said this to Jennifer. Them, and I said be... this to Jennifer. Cause she said because we were going on a trip on Sunday, and, I, and she said, pack a book, and I was going to pack the Kindle, and I said, well, 
This is my last weekend without an iPad for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> and it, 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 no. Because tonight we're all going to die. <laughs> it be that. Starting with you. I'm going to get hit by a bus. Or, but it could be, but, but I guess what I was sensing is that just the potential, not the guarantee. And I, and I want to be really clear. We don't know. But the potential is here for, a, a, just as when the iPhone came out, there was this, a revolution. Yeah. There's something significant. Now, I like Kay Shep in the uh, chat room, Ken Shepardson, who said, it's an unbelievable revolution. <laughs> 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 he might be right. But, uh, I, you know, I just, I, um, it, the potential is here for something significant well, to change in how we think about technology. Coming, I mean, like in all, a lot of my favorite applications, Plant vs. Zombies is supposed to come out. At, you know, the same. You know day. that I'm going to be living on that for. Omni Graffle is going to be. It looks yeah. like it's going to be coming out, and just. Uh. So that's the next question: is how much are you going to spend on iPad applications? Oh, I, I I've already budgeted like two hundred dollars yeah, for the first at week. Least. Ten bucks least. for for pages, yeah. Keynote, and numbers. That's thirty bucks. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Probably would it be five bucks or six bucks for uh, Plants vs Zombies probably HD, something like that. And I think the I think OmniGraffle is is a, is it's a gonna chunk be thirty of bucks. He'll probably they'll probably yeah something like for that. that. But I mean, I I think so much in OmniGraffle that I, I I need to. Like being able to have it on my iPad and be able to, I mean, the thing that I've noticed is that I'm with my iPhone. I've been much more willing to leave the house without my computer. With my iPad, mm -hmm. I think that it it's going to become more. I only bring my computer when I have to do real production. Yeah, yeah, and, and I, that's another big point as well. I mean, it, people have always said that, that the iPads are you know a consumption device. It's to consume your media, but I, I think when people start to use it, when they start to use iWork, and when they see the power of the computer built into the iPad that, um, you know, it is going to start to become a production machine. And we'll see lots more applications that will enable you to produce content on the iPad. There, there's you've something. The mobility, there. You've got the lightness, you, you, and you'll be able to produce You content. know, I have to say, and we've been talking about this a little on This Week in Google, because Jeff Jarvis is a, uh, you know, a, a, a covers journalism and the changing face of journalism. He, he believes, and I think he's not far wrong, really, that one of the reasons content companies like the Wall Street Journal love the iPad so much is it gives them a chance to kind of try to grasp back that, Premium, but what the dying idea that their content is some that the web doesn't change everything and that their content is somehow special and packaged, and uh, and he believes it's a, it's it, you know yeah of course all of these content companies love the idea of a closed channel and seventeen ninety nine a month for the Wall Street Journal which is what the journal says they're going to charge. What well, and I think that but, they but, can... but ultimately the web which is free and free flowing is 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 the future and so this is oh, this is kind of anachronistic but I, but i think that the the only thing about that is is that uh i think that they could make the case if they're really putting unique content not just the same content repackaged but unique content that you can only get through your subscription to the i mean don has a has a, a unique content that he provides for a subscription and people are willing to pay it you know we mm -hmm. have a subscription that we that we provide for people the pixel core that people are willing to pay extra because they want that specific kind of content and so the thing is is that people will pay for you know this thing if you create unique content that is not easily found somewhere else not at the, set, the same quality somewhere else and i think that it, it can be done. It's just that they have to go. If they're going to go down this path, they have to go full force. They have to make the experience of the Wall Street Journal, you know, better than anything that you'd ever want on paper, better than anything that, you, that you'd want on the web. And I think they can do that. But they have to. I mean, they're not going to be able to mess around. I mean, if they do this half heartedly, I think they're going to be screwed. Goes well with the, the French press, great, by the way. The, the French the press. Great, the, French oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. There's a lot of coffee involved. I think that what they're doing is they're pushing the idea of uh, morning. It's a morning thing. Mm. <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry, Andy, go ahead. Oh, no, I was, I was, I was, I was just going to say, I mean, I don't think necessarily the web was – uh, the web is where you have to publish newspapers and periodicals. Uh, I think that they're taking advantage of a new opportunity in that the consumer base is now being trained that professional, expensive to produce content like books can be packaged, uh, uh, sold under DRM as a download, and you will not be able to do anything you want to do with it, nor will you be able to get it for free. That's the lesson that consumers are starting to learn. They're starting to be trained by not for all the content that's available online, but for things that they associate with professionally produced, expensively produced content. So this is an opportunity, with, especially with a publication like the Wall Street Journal, to stop selling themselves as a web service and start selling themselves as a digital ebook. The Wall Street Journal is going to, is going to have a better chance of success than most because 
people don't necessarily buy the Wall Street Journal because they want to be entertained. They see it as a business expense, as a, as a, as a resource of information, something they can make money off of if they buy this thing. What's going to be interesting is when you have big, big national and international scope papers like the New York Times, when they move to that subscription model, will there be enough people willing to spend upwards of 80% of the regular subscription price just for the purpose of getting digital downloads of the complete issue every month. I think the, another big opportunity is for local papers because they're not going to have the ability to really sell as digital downloads, and that's where they can they can make the case that local advertisers, there is nobody that's going to be covering local sports the way, and local politics the way that we do because the New York Times has suddenly abandoned the entire world uh, and put gone behind a paywall. We are the real web. We are where you want your ads to be. So we're, it's, it's, it's one of those fights that we're just going to have to see who wins. Somebody in the chat room saying, well, uh, these content companies are going to wait and see, and they're not. That's the thing that's interesting. They're jumping now. Well, I think that what we're going to see is that the, the free stuff that you get on the web is going to be the same stuff that you get in the paper. The same, you know, I don't think anything's going to change with CNN or New York Times or anything else on the web. They'll continue to put that content up there. But I think what you're going to, if they're smart, what you're going to see is a lot of extra content, a lot of higher quality content uh, going on into the um, the iPad version. And I think, you know, when you see stills on the web, you're going to see more video. Uh, you're going to see deeper interviews. You're going to see deeper, you know, extras. Um, you know, I think that, that there's going to be a lot there that people who are very passionate about whatever that subject matter is um, can dig into and are willing yeah. to pay for. I, I think I the think other difference well, is going to be that... Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, John. Give, give, give Don a chance because he's... Okay. Exactly. No, I was going to say, um, people were disappointed at the, the, the launch when they, uh, there was no real solution for magazines. I mean, there was the magazine application, I think it was the, was it the Wall Street Journal that came along and, and shown, and people were sort of saying, well, you know, God, has every magazine now got to create their own application to deliver a magazine? And when I thought about it, actually, that's quite a good thing because it gives the, the, the magazine publishers the chance to differentiate themselves yes. between other articles. I mean, you know, content is content, but the presentation of the content is also a big selling point as well. I mean, if you go into a magazine store, you see all sorts of magazines printed on different quality paper, different fonts, you know, different methods of presentation. So really, the iPad is just, the, you know, the canvas for them to produce their applications to deliver their content in the best way that they see fit and to to differentiate themselves from other content providers. So in some respects, Apple sort of hasn't given them um, a, a boilerplate type uh, delivery mechanism for their newspapers. Yes, they've got the delivery mechanism in, by the way, they can get the bits and bytes down to the device. But they've left it to the content producers to actually develop their own applications to make these products that people you know, will want to buy because there'll be value to them. Well, and I, and I think that th there's a huge advantage for Apple that way because if you develop your application for the iPad and it becomes 80% of your sales, how much are you going to spend on the other uh, devices? You know, that's the thing is if, if, if Apple gets a head start and they've built all this work and most of their money is coming from the iPad, it, it, um, I think it, it blunts their interest in going into other platforms. The other thing is that what I'm, what I'm, one thing that I'm hoping to see is that pages, which you can, you can add video, you can add all these other pieces. What I'd love to see is if pages w was able to export a, some kind of ebook document, you know, that, that incorporates multimedia. It, it seems like a natural thing for pages to be able to export to the iPad. You know, so you can build a document in pages. I'm sure that And export happen. it out. Like it's all formatted that includes the video. Uh, you know, that would be... We don't know, massive. but I suspect it's just CSS. You know, it's just the usual stuff, CSS. Oh, yeah, it's, yeah. it's HTML under the hood, and then people know how to do this. It's basically building a fancy web page, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. And I think people know how to do this pretty well. And there are tools. There are lots of tools. Well, what's easy about that. it is it's only one browser. Right. I hate browsers. <laughs> I have to say, looking, at, I've been watching this video I'm reading uh, on the bookstore, and it just looks compelling compared to the Kindle, especially. I mean, it's got all the features of the Kindle, but it just it just really looks compelling. Uh, See, that's that's I, I think that that's fascinating to me too. The fact that this is the one uh, every book reader that I've tried out uh, has it, it's it's Jekyll and Hyde. It has the commercial bookstore and it has the ability to read epubs or in some way getting your own documents onto it and you really really want the ability to put any arbitrary unlocked file on it but you also want to be able to get commercial content that well, you like well we know now you can this, right because they've exactly, said that they're going to put gutenberg on there well not uh, well the the whole the whole point well it are actually even 3 weeks ago uh, when they updated the pages uh, for iPad, even a few weeks ago, they said that iBooks will let you use uh, EPUB files, right. uh, add, add that to the library. But the point is that 
you have to choose every time you buy a commercial ebook reader you have to choose do i want to cast my lot with the amazon store do i want to cast my lot with a, with a, uh, with the barnes and noble store all the, all these other sort of things with the because uh, kindle uh, amazon has already said we're going to be coming out with an ipad reader uh, and now we have the iBook store. And I'm sure that every other commercial bookstore uh, selling digital content will fall into line. This is the one electronic book reader that will read every single electronic book that's available. Right. Not, not maybe not most. In other words, pay, in other have, words, game over. Well, and then, if you yeah. if you have, if you got 500 bucks in your pocket, game over. That's the one you want. Yeah. And the the uh, it, someone tweeted uh, tweeted uh, me uh, that uh, Seton Hill, I guess, is now is already getting ready to supply all their students with iPads. Seton Hall. Yeah, Seton that's Hall that's inevitable. Yeah, that's a high school in um, – Seton Hall is a high school in New York City. Yeah, I, I decided to stop buying books about two months ago. But when the iPad came out, I said, right, that's it. I'm not buying any more paper books. I'm going to wait for the iPad. And there were a couple of books that I wanted. And when the Kindle for the iPad was announced, it's a university, right, those, those three or four yeah. books that I want, I'm going to buy at Amazon because now I can actually have it on my Kindle app on the phone. I'm a Kindle, I'm a Mac. And also, there's now a Kindle oh, it iPad. Is Seton, it is Seton, Seton Hill. Seton it's Hill not University. Seton Hall. Seton Hall, which is a university. I'd never heard of Seton Hill. Seton right. Hill is another <laughs> a private Catholic institution in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. <laughs> I've been there. That's why I, 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 I didn't want to say anything, but I've a, been to Seton Hill. I, I, was, I, was like, I was like, I was like, I think it's Seton Hill. It's a private college for people who can't spell quite right. <laughs> uh, okay, apologies. It's, it's not Seton Hall. All right. Uh, moving right along. Maybe Seton Hall will do it. I imagine that quite a few will follow. Well, what's interesting what's, is it's a, little, it's a small university. I mean, it's a really nice university, but it's a small university. It's, it's, not, uh, you know, it's not one we've seen, I don't think, in the past. And so I guess it already received. They already do 13-inch MacBooks. So, and I think we're going to see this. A lot of those universities that were doing 13-inch, the next rev, instead of using MacBooks, I think all of them are going to be iPads. I think there's... Uh, just massive advantages right. to using this. Right. Very, very interesting. All right, moving along. I, By the way, and a number of people are telling us in the chat room over and over again, oh, my God, you're not going to be able to get your iPad because Taiwan-based Elon Manu Microelectronics has filed a complaint with the ITC alleging Apple infringing on its past patents and <laughs> violating the Tariff Act, seeking a ban on imports of the iPad. <laughs> You don't think so, Andy? Somebody wants a free T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, it'll cost us the cost of one stamp. Even if they just give us like a free iPod dock connector, it's something we didn't have before. It's worth the risk. It's God. so it cracks me up. Look, uh, one of the things that we don't cover very often in this show. There's a couple of things. One is rumors. We've tried not to cover too much, although it's kind of hard with the uh, way Apple sits on things not to do rumors. But the other one is uh, lawsuits. Um, I, I would love to see a count of how many lawsuits currently are are, uh, are flying back and forth between Apple and others. And uh, and it's, you know, it's virtually meaningless to say there's a lawsuit. <laughs> At this point, it's certainly meaningless to say that uh, the well, I mean, iPad Apple, will be held back. Apple didn't have a, and the other thing is Apple, I mean, they have so much money riding on this. I mean, they, they didn't have the iPad trademark. Until, you saw that Fujitsu gave it up. Yeah, they, yeah. They, I'm sure that there was a there was some truck of cash that, that went, went to Fujitsu. Yeah. We don't know how much, but Fujitsu amazingly, sure surprisingly, gave it up last week. <laughs> what a shock. Hmm, we don't have anything that we're doing with this, and they're willing to pay us hundreds of, or tens of millions of yeah, dollars. I mean, how much does Apple have in the bank? I, I, I wouldn't worry about the, yeah. that kind of thing too much. Like, here, a kid, lot, take a dollar. Get out of here. A lot writing on this. Interesting. Another one, an interesting uh, article from vouchercodes.co.uk. I don't know. Uh, I don't, maybe you know this site since it's in your neck of the woods. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah, I think I've seen it but what they did, which is interesting, is a little chart of the real cost uh, based on accounting for inflation, which is easy. Anybody could do this of Apple products. So if you bought the Apple one, for instance, which was six hundred sixty six dollars in 1976 today, that's two thousand five hundred forty dollars uh, and twenty ten dollars. The Lisa would have been twenty one thousand dollars. The first Mac portable in 1989 which sold for a ridiculous six thousand five hundred dollars. That's worth really in today's money eleven thousand. The Newton Message Pad a thousand. The first iPad, which uh, iPod rather, in two thousand one was four hundred dollars, is roughly the same as what the iPad costs today. A little uh, more bang for your buck now. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I think that that's that's the point. A lot of people. It's funny because we had predicted much higher prices for the iPad. Yeah. And uh, when the price came out, because we our expectations were so high, we said, wow, four ninety nine is a good price. Then the rest of the world said, wow, that's a lot. But look at what the first iPhone cost. Look what the first iPod cost. It isn't a lot. It's right in there. It's, a, it's I think, a, a compelling price. Yeah. 
again. I mean, that's that's it's, it's they beat it by one dollar, but they beat it. I think that if it had been five hundred forty nine dollars, a lot of people would have to wait until they can make a com- really compelling argument for why they need right. one. This is within reach. It, it's also the, I think the other important thing is that you want to be just close enough to these two hundred eighty dollar book readers to make someone think. Well, what if we just waited another month, scraped up another hundred thirty dollars, and went for the iPad? We're going to take a break, come back with more. There's a lot more news, including uh, the uh, weird meeting between Steve Jobs and Eric Schmidt at a coffee bar in in, uh, Palo Alto last week, which we've talked about on every show except this show. But uh, we will talk about it on this show as well in just a little bit. But first, I want to get you some cash for your used gadgets at Gazelle. Gazelle Gazelle.com slash MacBreak. Gazelle is the place where you can recycle... And resell your smartphones, your MP3 players, your laptops, gaming consoles. Uh, They figure that you listeners to Mac Break Weekly probably have more junk lying around than you know what to do with. I know we all do. And what do you do with them? You hand them down. Maybe you go on eBay and spend some time selling them. What about this? G-A-Z-E-L-L-E dot com slash Mac Break. Enter the make and model of your used gadget. See how much Gazelle offers for it. Once you accept their offer, you enter your mailing address. Gazelle sends you a box to send it in. In most cases, they pay for postage. Now, somebody sent me a note saying, well, they didn't pay for postage for my G5 tower. Well, okay. <laughs> that might have been a little pricey. <laughs> but for the smaller stuff, they pay for postage. Uh, you select the payment method you want, which is cool. PayPal, check, or an Amazon or Walmart gift card. In fact, if you use the Amazon gift card, you get 5% more. You can also ask Gazelle to donate the value of your gadget to a charity. And now here's a cool thing. If, but this is only if you go to gazelle.com slash MacBreak. Enter in your Kindle. If you've got an old book reader that you're now thinking, hmm, it's time to sell it, <laughs> they're going to send you a free Zag Invisible Shield for your new iPad as an extra bonus. But you've got to mail in your ebook reader within 30 days. And uh, they've got a, a, uh, a special deal just for Mac. This is don't tell anybody, okay? This is just for you who listen to MacBreak Weekly, a little reward for you. You can Your Nook, your Kindle, any other ebook reader, Let's see. My does my Kindle One power on successfully? Yes. Is it free of water damage? Yes. It's in excellent condition because I only used it for a little while. I have all of the parts. Calculate the price, and it says this is what they'll pay you. Now, of course, one hundred seven dollars. That's good. Now, of course, the deal is, if uh, none of this, you know, if you if if it is worse condition than you say and so forth. Notice, by the way, the price of the Kindle is plummeting. <laughs> they have this. They have this graph. Since uh, June of last year, it's gone. It's gone down fifty <laughs> percent. Wonder why? What could that be? No pressure. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Because very... they know that the next edition of the Kindle is going to be even more awesome. <laughs> yeah, make sure you use the Mac Break bonus code to get that free protector for your iPad now through April fifteenth. I think that's a very funny promotion. G A Z E L L E dot com slash Mac Break. Don't forget the Mac Break. Coupon code, the bonus code to get their Zag Invisible Shield. Don't just sell it. Gazelle it. And I I really want to underscore this because a number of people have written to me and said they've done this and they've been very happy. If you're a business school or organization and you uh, uh, want to raise money for your private – I'm sorry, that's the wrong one. Let me go here. If you want to raise money for your nonprofit, Gazelle will give you a personalized gadget drive web page. Donors send in the gadgets. It's easy to get them to do that, and then you get the money, and I think that's a great, great thing. So if you've got an extra gadget to get rid of, gazelle it. G-A-Z-E-L-L-E dot com slash MacBreak. We thank them so much for their support of MacBreak Weekly. So um, we talked about this now on almost all of our shows. We're the last ones to talk about it, but I think it's apropos. Eric Schmidt and Steve Jobs hobnobbing. At a, at a coffee bar in Palo Alto. Did you see the pictures? Looks like a photo op. That's what I thought. Yeah. I, I find it like hard why to believe they do that, that they might just happen to meet up. Mm. Also, also, you, you know, how, how? when was the last time you saw a, a, a candid picture of that man that was not like as part of, oh, he, he's, he walked through Macworld Expo floor or he was at this right. press event. Right. When was the last time anybody caught him at a, at a time when he did not expect to be photographed? Oh, I, what, and what, they're what, sitting <clears throat> outside. 
When I think of Steve Jobs, I think of that, I think from the Born Identity where he goes, he made his first mistake and he goes, they don't make mistakes. They don't do random. Yeah. You know, you know, yeah. yeah. There's always a plan. There's random. always a, you know, he goes, exactly. who's controlling him now? Scary version? Exactly. <laughs> where's, where's security? I mean, two gazillionaires sitting out there in the you know middle of the street having a cup of coffee each. You'd think they'd be surrounded by uh, uh, protectors or whatever, but uh, it's very strange well, to have them. There, there, like there Steve has that covered. He dresses like a beat poet, so. <laughs> he, yeah, that's funny because, you know, He's wearing the black turtleneck. And the black socks mm -hmm. with the tennis shoes. Black socks, tennis shoes, uh, blue jeans, the the Steve standard. Now, Gizmodo, I thought, had a little fun with this. They got a body language analyst who used to work for the uh, ATF, Janine Driver, to analyze the photo and compare it with other photos. She made a couple of notes. First of all, Steve Jobs, left leg over, right leg crossed. He, she says... This is not typical for Steve. He tends to sit with his legs open. The only other time we've only other picture we could find of him with left over right was sitting with Bill Gates. That means this is his guarded position. He's not really comfortable. But the best part was she said, note Eric Schmidt's shoulders. They're hunched. See how they're hunched like that? He said she said, We only see this with criminals who are faced with law enforcement. My conclusion, says Janine Driver of the ATF. Eric Schmidt is terrified of Steve Jobs. I bet they didn't plan on that with a photo op. Is this woman the CEO whisperer or something? <laughs> then there was a lot of question uh, about the black thing in front of them. What could that be? Well, it turns out it's just a menu. <laughs> the and, bill. and finally, uh, a little more sleuthing turned up that this coffee shop, Calafia, is owned by a former executive chef at Google. So I'm thinking this was planned. I mean, you don't think that Steve's shopping for turtlenecks happens to walk into this coffee shop. There's Eric. Hey, Eric, let's go sit outside on the sidewalk and have a cup of coffee. I mean, the press has been going a bit uh, strong on the Google. Well, they've made it personal as well. There's been lots of uh, articles about the animosity between Google and Apple, but more specifically between the two CEOs, you know, with uh, with Eric being on the board and uh, and then the, the Google phone coming out, et cetera. And the, 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 the press has tried to make it a very personal thing between the both CEOs. Right. So this is probably a really easy way, you know, forget about press releases, forget about, you know, the denials and whatever. Let's just go go somewhere in public, have a cup of coffee, and then, you know, that we'll try and put the end to those uh, particular rumors and we'll just get on with it. Then. So that might just be that. But who wears black socks with tennis shoes? Come on, really. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. Well, the the, uh, the interesting thing is, as, as we look at this, it's, a, it's interesting timing because, uh, the, you know, the rumors that are starting to, to, to build up is that next week we may, we, maybe we may see an ad network from Apple. Yeah, I mean, it's very clear that Apple is doing everything they can to go after Google. They tried to buy ad mob. Didn't uh, they let inexplicably they that let the thirty day, forty five day, forty five day waiting period expire? Google immediately snaps up AdMob for more than Apple was offering, right? Basically stealing it from them. So Apple bought another kind of also ran company and now is reportedly going to do a mobile ad network. I mean, it, it could be a, it could be a, it could be going right after Google. Well, and and, and the thing is, is it, it, they could be you know I think that they'll do it in the more Apple way which is more refined more designed more focused than text uh text search items and, I, and and again it doesn't have to be it doesn't have they don't have to get a majority the the issue is, is in the same reason that ipad and iphone uh consumers are very valuable is the same way that you know when you open up a magazine i get like ll bean and travel smith and you know whatever all those all those magazines at home and the whole front the front three quarters is women's stuff yeah. Why is that? Because they buy more stuff and they spend more money <laughs> on each piece of that stuff than the men do. So we get shoved into the back. Right. In the same way, people who buy iPads and i and iPhones buy more stuff and they spend more money. They are very valuable, um, you know, segment of the market. And uh, Apple really owning that uh, and shutting other people out theoretically uh, could really, um, you know, be be a problem five years from now, ten right. years from now for right. for these guys. In the same way that everyone thought that it was a big deal that, oh, you know, Apple needs Flash. And now it's really much more of an Adobe needs Flash to be on the, on the iPhone. Some other stories real quickly. 10 point uh, Snow Leopard, new Snow Leopard update. Not for other versions of Leopard. They took the blood out. Yeah, they took the blood out. Evidently, there's no more blood in the Snow Leopard. I only have one machine with Snow Leopard on it. And uh, so I didn't see an update. 
Uh, but what's in this? Uh, besides this, the, there is blood in Snow Leopard. What are you talking about? So there was there was evidently a report. Of, if you look at the side by side images, um, the new Snow Leopard, there, there 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 was a trace amount of blood in the, in in the, the leopard's mouth. In like the leopard's just ate mouth, something? you know, it, it must have just eaten. Well, I mean, you know, if you're gonna take a picture of a leopard, you want him to be happy. You want him to be happy. He's a Snow Ew. Leopard. You're getting up close to him. You want him not to be hungry because you know the photographer will look tasty. So Good thing you, the photographer could operate that camera one-handed. Yeah, one exactly. Arm. So, so the uh, so it, it so evidently the the tiger had been um, fed recently or had eaten recently, and uh, and so that they didn't quite catch that the first time around, and so they caught it on That's this rev. So funny. Uh, although I kind of like the, I think the blood was kind of you know. <laughs> so ten point six point three more to the point uh, eliminated quite a few security flaws, and there is an update here. Let's just this is I don't see the blood, so we're gonna zoom in. See if you, oh, well, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> okay, left, the new leopard, right, the old leopard. Okay. Where's the blood? On his lips? I think it's just on the corner the of the mouth, on the right there? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they certainly have changed something. Same picture, they've, uh, they've you know, it looks like they just went in a <laughs> light room and just touched it up, or aperture, I guess. No, but I think it it's on the, on the right side. I see, side, right here, the right though. Yeah, yeah, see, there's, yeah, there's a little, the little blood in the corner of the mouth there. But that's not blood, that's just. Leopard lip. Schmutz. It's leopard lip. It's got a bigger lip. They, you know, they did the same thing they did to Kate Moss. They just shrunk the lip a little bit there. Exactly. Yeah, that's it. They made, you know what? They made him smile. Yeah, he, feel, hey, he looks a little bit more. Got smile. Just back to kill. I'd be smiling too. <laughs> more to the point. Through you, Mister Snow Rabbit. <laughs> You Get did. the hell off my lawn. You did. More to the point. Uh, quite a few uh, uh, updates besides the blood. Uh, security updates, which will also be available for other versions, but just not as a 10.6.3 update. This is a 92 vulnerability patch here. A third of them critical vulnerabilities. Um, holy cow. 10.5 and 10.6 will get, get this. This is the largest uh, patch ever in the history of Apple. Um, wow. Yeah, it was about 430 megabytes, I think, the actual patch. Well, mine, you know... Com combo was even bigger. I mean, mine was um, 270, I think. So I guess it just depends. So, uh, today's security roll-up fixed flaws in 42 different applications or operating system components from AppKit and Application Firewall to Unzip and X11. 18 of the vulnerabilities were specific to the older Leopard operating system, 29 specific to Snow Leopard. Remaining 45 affected both. Unbelievable. Huge, huge patch. Uh, more than 40% were accompanied by the chilling phrase, may lead to arbitrary code execution, which is, of course, if you know about security, not something you want. Uh, nine quick time patches. <laughs> nine, all rated critical. This It seems like Apple been saving up. They get, yeah, it was a they huge get, thing. Yeah. You know, it's, it's that they... Uh, <laughs> Uh, they might have been a lot of them might, might have been related. You know, it's well. interesting. Uh, they they do that pwn to own. Uh, Kansek West does this in uh, Vancouver every year, and Charlie Miller, who's always there every time, won it again. And uh, I think the only browser that didn't get hacked was Chrome. Was Chrome so, yeah. Safari fell first, uh, and he did it again. And he says Apple has not patched the vulnerability I used on Wednesday. The pwn to own <laughs> bug is still there. Wow. I think, well, I think of anything, it sort of underscores the correctness of or the rationality of Apple's approach sometimes about sandboxing everything and limiting what one program can do uh, with uh, opportunities to interact with other programs. Uh, the, the thing that, that Chrome uh, did that made Chrome so successful was the fact that it, everything is so completely and tightly sandboxed. You can get into one right. tab, uh, malicious code can get into one tab of the browser, but it can do nothing to influence any other tab. So... I mean, if you're if you're digging, if we're digging for a scrap of pride as an Apple as an Apple user to to come out of this, it's that well, maybe there is an upside to this idea of well, we're not going to allow random apps to have access to any directory in the in the system. We're not going to allow just arbitrary code to be loaded onto the device. That sort of stuff. Right. Actually, out of out of that entire big update, I've only actually seen uh, one change to the uh, to the OS one 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 visible change, and that's uh, and I've got to give. Uh, at Vinco uh, on Twitter, he's the one who spotted it. Actually, I just picked it up on a tweet. But if you're looking at QuickTimex now, if you try to fast forward anything in QuickTimex, you get a tiny little times two or times four indicator in the top right-hand corner, left-hand corner of the QuickTimex window. 
And for, for that enormous grip of security patch and, and bug fix release, that's the only thing I've actually been able to see physically on the surface. So well, there's enough stuff going on underneath in, in the uh, underlying operating system. And you have to say that uh, pretty typically when Apple uh, ships like a new iPod or new anything, they, they, they do a big update to prepare for that. And I presume that some of these QuickTime, well, I mean, some of, a lot of them are patches uh, for security flaws, but presumably iTunes and QuickTime receive some updates for the uh, iPad, right? Or maybe not. Some well, there sh should be a new version of iTunes, we think, um, but before Saturday anyway for uh, for the iPad uh, to cope with all the books, etc. Yeah, the uh, Mac Rumors is saying 9.1 will uh, support eBooks. That's nice. So we'll be able to do eBooks on the desktop as well as on the iPad. That's cool. That'll be great. Uh, the audio books entry in iTunes will be replaced with a books section meant to encompass both audio and e-books. Um, content management for portables like the iPad and iPhone will also be changed in order to allow users to sync e-book content to their devices more easily. Uh, geniuses, the Genius Mixes uh, will allow users to have a bit more control over them uh, in the update. This is all a rumor from Mac Rumors. Currently, uh, the only functionality is a simple play-pause over the album art in iTunes 9.1, users will be able to rename mixes and rearrange them to drag and drop. That'll be nice. You'll also be able to delete the stuff in the Genius Mix you don't like. Um, iPod Shuffle users have long had the ability to have iTunes auto-convert songs to 128-bit kilobit AAC. Uh, iTunes 9.1 apparently will bring this optional feature, optional, we should say, to other iPods as well to shrink your iPod library. Yeah, we get a lot of comments from people who are, are, are displeased with the iTunes Plus format because, you know, it's 256. Uh, Huge, yeah. So, you know, it literally is double the size of the files from the standard 128. And uh, a lot of people for their portable device, they don't really want to have that. So they don't need the quality because they, ca they can't actually tell the difference. On your home system, when you've got it connected to a decent stereo, great. But, um, yeah, the rumor is that you'll be able to convert on the fly so that you can, you know, push over um, lower bit rate versions of your of your music to your portable device and uh, and get more stuff on it, basically. I'd, I'd love to see that feature just expanded in general. There's so many times when they'll tell me that uh, if I've ripped a DVD or just recorded something off the air, that it can't this this file cannot be synced to your to your device because it's an inc incompatible format. I'd love to. I love there for, there for there to be a third button saying, "Well, just do what you can, convert it, convert it as at will." Uh, because I just want that. To, I, just, I, I just keep putting it off and putting it off. I just don't go through my library to look for things that do not sync properly and then convert them into the proper formats. Here's mm -hmm. some really good news uh, for people. Uh, people have been asking about You've been asking about this, Alex. According to Digital Beat, the self-publishing service Smashwords has signed a distribution deal with Apple to put books on the iBook store. They'll be like the CD baby. Right, so clearinghouse. Uh, yeah, so you'll be a clearinghouse. So anybody who wants to publish... To the iBookstore, we'll be able to do that through Smashwords. And Apple does this mostly because they don't want to uh, write individual checks deals. that are 20. Yeah, they, yeah. they just don't want to deal with individuals. Yeah. They, they'd rather have somebody else manage that for them. Mm -hmm. uh, Dean Takahashi, writing for Digital Beat, says users will be able to submit their works to Smashwords through a simple process that involves uploading a Microsoft Word, Word file. Selling, setting the price, and deciding where the book is to be published. The company is also reportedly adding support for ISBN numbers. So you'll be uh, you'll be given an ISBN when you uh, when you hmm. submit, which is kind of cool. It's going to be really yeah. interesting to see, you know, whether you know whether authors will start to really just go out. You know, if they're not getting published, they you know this is really the <laughs> huge know, marketplace, straight, right? yeah. But it, but not if it doesn't allow you to to produce a really quality product. I can spend like three four months putting together what I feel is a really really good book. But if the product that my customer buys and installs on the iPad looks like a big Word document, I'm not sure that that's something that I want to do. Yeah, that's a little disappointing. Yeah, I mean, well, is it converting that Word document or is it is it? Uh... That's the question. idea. I mean, if, there, if there's a markup language that I can use, if, it's, if it allows me to download a style sheet that simply says, as long as you can modify these styles, but as long as you make sure that you have the header styled this way, the body text is styled that way, we, we promise you that it'll look good on the device. Uh, the, the other aspect is, is the idea of producing your own reader app, which is something that, uh, uh, that I've been looking into, which is cool because it allows you to build the app and the features that you actually really, really want. Yeah, wouldn't so, that be neat? Right. I mean, we're, I've, I've, the uh, we I now have a title of the iPad book. I'm not rather not not, I, not allowed to share it right now because we have we have to like you know make sure that no one else steals it. Uh, but 
uh, it, but then now we're talking about how we want the ebook version of this to be, and I've got all these ideas. And what if we add this? And what if we do that? And what if we say, yeah, we can do that. We can do that. Sure, let's try to do that. Uh, so that that's the, exactly the sort of way that we're going to be bringing content forward, not by simply saying, you know, this word file that I was going to have typeset. Well, why don't we just throw that into a into a placeholder and make it into a book reader instead? You know, I really want to see people just make things that are, go beyond books. I don't think that a word file is going to do it. Yeah. Um, here's some good news. This is something that I was kind of in visualizing uh, as, a, as a use for the iPad. I want to put a sling player on the iPad and yeah. be able to watch TV from my sling box. Yeah. So Sling says we won't have it out in time for the iPad ship date, but we are working on it. And you will have to have one of the newer sling boxes that does H.264 encoding, of course, because they can't support Flash. Um, so that's good news. This is um, according to that's not funny dot com. <laughs> so that's a uh, that's got to be uh, that's got to be incredible. I've always source. wondered, like you know, like not not that not that I feel as though like guys like us, like you know, it's impossible for us not to know about something that's, something that's going on. But I'm always I'm always amazed when I hear a story like Steve Steve Jobs rumored to like be working on new Slate device. It will be called iPad. Like wow, who got that? Mac OS rumors, uh, Apple Insider, Mac World. No, it got Dave and John's awesome Xbox Live rumors page. <laughs> like how did you get that? Yeah, we just don't uh, we don't do the dumpster diving, Andy. That's the problem. Or to see that that's our problem. Our hands are too clean. We, we <laughs> these you got to get dirty. That's got, not funny. It's, it's been a while since we felt an enemy's throat within our hands. <laughs> Heard that pop of a trachea collapsing. So you know? just take this with whatever grain of salt you choose. I recently checked in with my former sling peeps regarding mobile clients, specifically codecs and resolution. Uh, he says that an Android client is on tap for this summer. Uh, and I wondered if they're sticking with WMV. Oh, that's what it is, not Flash. WMV video streaming or moving to H. Dot for uh, this platform. Well, I wasn't able to get a definitive answer on Android from my cousin. Oh, now see, now I'm getting upset. <laughs> Mobile product manager at Sling is David Eiler. That's my cousin. So <laughs> I guess I just need to dig a little deeper, huh? Dave. Hey, David. Cousin Leo's here. Uh <laughs> <laughs> He's, he says they're actively moving towards H. Uh, probably if I return his calls, I'd know this. Uh, they're actively moving towards H.26. He is my Facebook friend. Maybe he could have just sent me a... <laughs> which requires a newer, more capable place shifters. I don't know what that means. Also, really no surprise they're going to the Silverlight route for Windows Phone 7. He says, in regards to resolution, I don't believe Sling Media has taken mobile client video resolutions but beyond 320 by 240, which, of course, would be very low res on the iPad. He says, due to processing power, memory, bandwidth, and battery life, but here comes the iPad, and I don't want a pixel-doubled iPhone Sling Player app on that large screen. Neither do I. Fortunately, Sling has confirmed they're prepared to accommodate me with something a bit better someday. Quoting Cousin Dave, when it makes a noticeable difference in quality, we will definitely provide higher resolution streaming. The iPad is a good example of a device where we are hard at work on this, but unfortunately it won't be there at the April launch. And, of course, Apple has to approve but uh, without AT and T being in the mix, why wouldn't they? It was AT and T that blocked three G sling for a long time on the iPhone. Right. I mean, it's oh, so many opportunities. One more yeah. story. One more story. Then we're going to go to our picks of the week, and this is uh, from the Wall Street Journal. So it must be true. Of course, everything they say is the truth. The world and and expensive. It's expensive you, truth. Yukari Iwatani Kane and Tsing Yi Tsai and Niraj Niraj Sheth called my cousin and asked him, and it, apparently it's true, App, <laughs> Apple begins uh, plans to begin introducing a new iPhone that could allow U.S. carriers other than AT&T to sell it a CDMA version. Now, you will hear on mainstream media people saying, Verizon, Verizon, Verizon. This Wall Street Journal article does not say Verizon. It merely says CDMA. With Apple developing a phone... Now, by the way, uh, Apple has used the journal numerous times in the past to float stuff like this. And I don't think the journal's real... I mean, what do you say, Andy? You're the, you're the newspaper guy. They're not going to publish a story like this unless they feel fairly confident it's true. 
Yeah, because if if there's one thing that a big newspaper like that gets is that you can't put a story like that out before you convince a great number of people at much higher pay grades than you that it's actually true, which means that doesn't mean they don't get anything wrong, but at least you know that this wasn't just someone who put two and two together and decided to go with it. This was someone who had to convince another guy who probably had to convince another guy. Uh, that, again, that doesn't mean that I absolutely believe it, but it means that it makes a lot of sense. It's a natural flow for it. Uh, it's a source that is known, definitely knows uh, the legal repercussions of saying something that's, that's not true. So eh, I don't doubt it. I yeah. don't believe it, but I don't doubt it. AT&T's comment. <laughs> I love this. AT&T says, there's been lots of incorrect speculation on CDMA iPhones for a long time. We haven't seen one yet. And only Apple knows when that might occur. <laughs> yeah, you gotta... So you should buy an at and <laughs> Buy one phone. now. <laughs> Our map is colored blue. Their map is colored red. <laughs> Blue like the ocean, red like fire. <laughs> just standing by. Separately, Apple plans, this is again the journal, Apple plans to release a new version of its current iPhone this summer. Apple, you know, normally in March is when Apple says this is, but they've got the iPad thing, and, and they're going to wait till that's out of the way, I'm sure. Well, they, they do it every year. It seems like we get a new iPhone at the end of every June. I'm just going to read this. This is what the Wall Street Journal says. Separately, Apple plans to release a new version of its current phone this summer, continuing its practice of annual upgrades at about the same time of year, said people briefed on the matter. The model is likely to be thinner and have a faster processor. Two people familiar with the device said. All these people who are familiar. Well, it makes sense. It should have a Snapdragon or something of the equivalent of gigahertz processor, right? Maybe the same processor in the um, iPad, you think? That custom know. wow, that arm? Be, oh, same family possibly. Yeah, it's an arm, I I, arm I, SOC, I think, right? I think it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be fueled by the need to upgrade the display, um, because the dis iPhone display I think looks perfectly fine compared to all of its modern competitors. But it's gonna start to look a little bit shabby because of its lower resolution. Uh, so I think that they're if if there's a, the next thing that's on the hit list is gonna be improving the display a little bit. But the and the the idea that now you have a, a display that might be have four times the square footage means you probably have need to have a better a better processor just to push all those pixels around. So, yeah, uh, do you think they'll do a AMOLED uh, screen and as the uh, Nexus One and some other phones are doing? I don't know. I th I think there's a reason why they chose the technology that they chose for the iPad. Right. So. Um, and you, I agree with you. In fact, there are better screens out there. The Nexus One, the Droid, all have higher resolution uh, screens. The I, new Evo I, is incredible, 4.3 mm -hmm. inches. High, higher resolution, the problem is they don't really do anything with that. All they do is, uh, the up, if, uh, that's one of the problems I had with the Nexus One, that it's a much higher definition to sc screen, but they didn't upgrade the fonts to make them more readable for that display. Now it's these thin characters that kind of looked okay at lower resolution. Now they, in many cases, they just sort of disappear because they're just hairline thin in places. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what Apple would do with a real high resolution, high definition pocket size display. They definitely make a little, much more use of it. But they, they're the kings of typography on mobile devices. They make sure that you know fonts are readable, render correctly, and that there's they're appropriate for the situation. I'm wondering. Yeah, I mean, they must have a. Sorry. Go ahead. They must have. Um, well, I just wonder what they do have in the pipeline because we've heard absolutely. I know they never tell us anyway, but there's been absolutely nothing to do with the new phone, but also uh, the new version of the iOS software as well, um, version four. So you know, as as they said, get the iPad out of the way and then you know line up, start up the expectation for the iPhone. And I, I think it's interesting because now they've got the iPad, which is an, a mobile device. I mean, when they brought out the iPhone. Other than the iPod, they didn't really have a mobile computing device, other than laptops, obviously. But, but now there, there are some sort of overlaps between the iPhone and the iPad. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they position both devices now, uh, because they both are primarily mobile devices. Now, obviously, they don't want to make the iPhone any bigger, obviously higher resolution probably on the, on the screen. But they'll probably want to start, you know, high, HD video cameras, um, better eye chat facilities, possibly stuff like that. But they, they, they will be treading a fine line to make sure that they clearly differentiate between the iPad and its capabilities and the iPhone as well. But, so that I think that from, from a developer's point of view, isn't there an issue with trying to make sure, I mean, it would be easier if, for instance, the iPhone was running at something that was near the same resolution as the, I mean, it'd be really tiny, but if it was really sharp, and you could you could see the interface. Uh, you know, you might have a, be able to do a similar development for both of them. I think one of the problems you're going to get into is you know, you're not going to you're going to end up buying apps for each one. You know, for the iPad and the iPhone. I think that's going to be the issue is because 
I don't think you can really, at the beginning, all these apps are going to run on both, but I think you're going to want to customize them for the iPad. Uh, having more resolution and more power in the in the little iPhone just makes it more, you possibly do a, a dual release that is probably a little closer. I got to turn my mic on. <laughs> Faster forward. The Rob uh, Pergararo column in the Washington Post says, the iPhone probably isn't coming to Verizon just yet. Uh, and, and John Gruber, by the way, called the Wall Street Journal entry into the iPhone rumors game lame. <laughs> <laughs> He's so grouchy. Um, actually, the, the Washington Post said it was cautiously phrased, and I think that might even be more accurate. They, they, they didn't really say much except appears to be, could be, might be, is possibly... Um, we have been hearing that, and this is this is uh, this is what uh, Rob points out in the Washington Post. We've been having hearing these rumors about Verizon for a long darn time since 2007. Even Verizon kind of fueled the fire. Its own executives saying, "Yeah, we're going to get the iPhone." A couple of years ago, um, he doesn't have any reason to be skeptical, except that we've seen this for a while. It's possible Sprint. I mean, CDMA doesn't have to be Verizon. I can't imagine, though, that if Apple moves or adds to AT and T, that they would go to Sprint. And certainly, everybody, Sprint? yes, the strong one would be <laughs> strong the, all, the Sprint. The the also ran. He also ran. Except except if you're here in Las Vegas. Yeah, but Sprint's got some like this EV. Oh, this new uh, HTC phone, the Evo, which is on 4G and is a beautiful phone. That's the one with a 4.3-inch screen. It's running what's, Droid 2.0, 2.1, mm -hmm. rather. What's the point of having 4G if it can only work in cities that you don't live in and never visit? <laughs> yeah, I agree. That, that's, that's why I didn't the, order one. Yeah. It's, I, I'm, I'm, they show Spunk, and it seems like a really hot handset. But <laughs> Spunky Sprint. Yeah. See, the other flip side of that is that no one really cares that there's no coverage in Orem, Utah. You know, they care that there's coverage in Walpole, Massachusetts, and they care that there's coverage in New York and San Francisco, the places where they live, work, and visit sometimes. So maybe it's not that big of a deal. So if they look at that map and they realize that there's plenty of there's plenty of 4G wherever I'm ever likely to go, and there'll be 3G everywhere else, okay. Currently, it's in Georgia, Hawaii, Idaho, Illinois, Maryland, North Carolina. This can't be right. <laughs> I can't be right. <laughs> they just they just want to make sure that no tech columnist will ever have a chance to try it out. <laughs> not, until, not until they've had two years worth of experience. It must be an error here. We're rolling out 4G coverage as quickly as we can. Pick a state and then city to view coverage in that area. So I'm looking at the drop down. Here's the states. Georgia, Hawaii, Idaho, Illinois, Maryland, North Carolina, Nevada, Oregon, Pennsylvania, Texas, and Washington. Well, it's got Pennsylvania. So, I mean, you, you want me to see if Pittsburgh's on the list? I don't see California on that list. I don't see Massachusetts on that list, yeah, and I definitely don't see Liverpool on that list. On that list. <laughs> that's, that's, that's weird because I believe that they were testing 4G in Boston. I know. So, that's what. I, what am I doing wrong? Maybe, maybe they just set up a. Maybe is this the same Sprint? Or... Is this plucky little also ran Sprint that I'm? Yeah, it's Sprint. Turbocharge your internet with 4G in select cities. Let's see. Select the state. Your city gets selected. Apparently, nothing in California. Okay, well. Hmm. I guess I won't be buying the Evo. You know, I, this is the problem. You know, you gotta go to Verizon, or you're not gonna go. Why else? Why? Where else would you go? You gotta go to Verizon. Yeah. The the other difficulty presented by this phone is that I think that now I almost lost count at the different flavors of Android phones uh, oh, are up there right out of now. Control. Where I mean, if I, if I buy this new phone, am I what what branch of the marketplace am I going to be able to get? Uh, applications that will really, really support it well, or is there going to have to be the the tablet, the, the the tablet store, the mini tablet store, the Google G1 style, uh, the T-Mobile G1 style store, the 2.0 store, the 1.6 store? They really need to start getting these. Just they need to start getting all these all, all these cows that have been out in the pasture, corral them back into one one big place where the the, the marketplace seems the marketplace seems manageable. The last time I recommended an application to a friend of mine who's an Android user, it just absolutely didn't work because he it's not right. available for his Could, device. It's not it. compatible. It doesn't yeah. work, and that's frustrating as hell. Even Google is releasing like the Google Buzz widget only works on one point six and later, so half the Android handsets, including its own G one, won't won't use it. Well, and that's it's going to be the issue. That's a big well, issue. Well, 
1.6 is okay. The problem is that most uh, 1.6 and above is okay. The problem is uh, one of the problems is 2.0 and above, right. where you're stuck with a 1.6 handset and you keep asking your carrier, yes, I'm told that this OS works just fine on my handset. When will I be able to download it? And they say, well, we don't know. We're still looking at it. You sure don't want to buy a 2.1 phone? We had them for sale. It only cost you a $40 upgrade fee plus a $300 replacement handset cost. Uh, by the way, uh, somebody in our chat room, Scooter X, is saying Android 2.1 is now finally today, as of today, rolling out for the Droid, which uh, will make a lot of people very happy. All right, this is our last Mac Break Weekly before their last non iPad Mac Break Weekly. Mm -hmm. Starting next week, all of us <laughs> will join Andy in having an iPad. <laughs> Buster, Buster. <laughs> and you can stop pretending. No. You know, the no. reason we give Andy this hard time is because when the iPhone 3GS came out, he did, in <laughs> fact, get it ahead of time and, and had the amazing born-like chutzpah to use it in studio and did this whole sleight of hand thing where he took out the 3G and said, oh, see, it's cracked. And then he switched and they put it in his pocket. And he pulled out the... Switched cases put the new 3gs in the same case so we would think it was the one he showed us pulled it out took a picture not that we're bitter not that we're only bitter. I, okay <laughs> let, let, let's let's rewind and make sure that i only did that because the 3g and the 3gs are visually identical that i could use it and i was actually using it in the streets of san francisco like all week long because i needed i wanted to take pictures and video uh, and try out those features and have something substantive, substantive to say uh the i you know the ipad would be a totally different thing you know so i mean I, that's that's why like i'm i would do i had to do this I, i'm having to do this test like uh, two weeks ago because uh, I wanted to, you know, started to figure out, well, what's going to be like to carry around an iPod, I, an iPad? Because I had no idea, so I still had like my mock up, and I actually carried it like one of those, you know, like when they want to teach a junior high school kid, please don't get a baby because it'll ruin your life. It's a lot more work than you think makes you know, that you think it'll be on TV. And so they they make these kids like carry a five pound sack of flour and keep it safe for like for a whole week. I was carrying this as my like fake, <laughs> as my five pound sack of flour iPad for an entire week just to figure out what would it be like to make sure that if I wanted to use this as my carrying around machine, uh, how I would be able to use it. How was it so, when you had to change its diapers? Was that okay? <laughs> well, it, it, it kernel panicked right in the middle of a theater. You know, I got a lot of dirty looks, but, you know, <laughs> look at that. Yeah. You, you, you understand that the responsibility, you, you've been placed by God, this, this responsibility in your it's hand, this heavy, precious heavy responsibility. Fun. Exactly. I can't wait. I'm sorry. I'm trying not to be a cheerleader. That could have been a real one, you know. And he's only pretending it could the inside that cardboard could, have, that could be a real one. What iPad I did was I, I razored exactly this open, open <laughs> inserted the iPad inside it. He could totally do that. I wouldn't put it past him. The guy is amazing. <laughs> if it were a real iPad, could I do this? He says. All right, stop that light then. Yeah, clunk, clunk, clunk. Yes. <laughs> Uh, Andy. And, and for, for for the record, and, and this would this would be true if I had one or if I did not have one. I am pretty tired of friends asking me if I have one. I'm pretty tired yeah. of people saying, "Oh, do, do you have, I, I, you told me that you're reading this 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 uh, this week's copy of People magazine. Do you still have it in your bag?" I said, "Yeah, here it is." Like, "Oh, could you open up your bag really really <laughs> wide so as you pull out your copy of Time magazine or People magazine?" Oh, God. You know we're just messing with you, Andy. I, oh, oh, believe me, I'm very aware that you're messing with me. It's just fun. <laughs> it's just for fun. That I'm being right now. Don't take it personally. It's like we, you know, you're the only actual journalist I've ever met. So it's, you know, I'm <laughs> I don't know Ed Begg and David Pogue and Walt Mossberg, so I have to pick on you. That's all right. Mankind is born into trouble just as surely as the sparks fly upward. Wow. That's Book heavy. of Job. Hello, New <laughs> Testament. All I know is Jesus wept, and I'm about to weep. We're going to take a break <laughs> and uh, do our picks of the week in just a bit. But before we do, we should mention our good friends at audible.com who make this show possible. We love Audible. We know you will love Audible, too, if you haven't tried it yet. I got an email from somebody. I have to say, it kind of broke my heart a little bit. He said, I'm sorry. I'm going to stop donating to your podcast. I stopped listening to your podcast because I became an Audible subscriber, and now all I do is listen to audiobooks. Kind of, I think he said, kind of ironic, isn't it? That's all right. Hey, dude, it's fine. Just come back after, after a while. You come back. Audible, I don't blame him. Audible, you look at, you could listen to us goof around or you could listen to uh, 
you know, great novels from the best minds of history. You could listen to science fiction from some of the best imaginative writers in the world. You could he read history or, or mysteries or thrillers or, you know, I mean, Audible is a 70,000 book bookstore. It's pretty hard to compete against. It's the future. It's the future, man. Plays on your iPad, your iPhone, your, of course, your, all your Apple devices, but also on your Microsoft devices, on your Kindle 2. Uh, it also plays on um, many GPSs and the Sansa and the iRiver, a whole bunch of devices. If you go to audible.com and click the device center at the top of the page right there, you'll see a list of devices. Do check, make sure it'll play back on your device. Of course, your computer, it will always play back on that. The nice thing about this is you can go browsing around on audible.com, pick a book, and within a minute or two, have a high-quality audio version of it downloaded to your computer or on your device. And I mean, it's just a great way to, uh, to, to read when you wouldn't you know, normally be able to read, to keep up with uh, your reading, to get your mind working again. If you go to audible.com slash MacBreak, get your first book free. You'll be signing up for the gold account, which is a book a month. But, you know, if you get your first one free, that's kind of nice. You cancel at any time. So it's kind of a good way to, to listen and, um, and, and see if, if Audible is right for you. Andy Yanako and I, and I guess you too, uh, Alex, are big Audible fans. Do you I, ever... I don't. <laughs> someone, someone wanted to send me a, some, a, a book to read, and I, and I looked at him and I said, I don't read. I just don't. Who has time? I don't read. I listen in my car. I listen, I listen at the gym. I listen yeah. when I'm cleaning house. I listen to go to sleep at night. I'm listening to Audible all the time. Yeah. Did do, do you, you know it's different in the UK? I don't know. Do you are you an Audible uh, listener? Uh, um, not really, to be honest. No. Yeah. Although we do have Audible here in the UK. So, you do, uh, but you know what you don't have, which kills me. And mm -hmm. I apologize because we've recommended this book so many times. It's such a great book. Daniel Suarez's Demon and the new one Freedom TM. Oh uh, right, okay. Penguin uh, for some reason do, Penguin Audio does not offer it in the UK. You have to come here. When you're picking up the iPod, pick that up as well because it's such a good book. Andy, what are you listening to these days? Uh, I've made sort of a weird selection uh, because uh, oftentimes, when I, oftentimes when I'm talking about my picks, I talk about, well, the 41-hour the audio book that I downloaded last week, I'm only about uh, like eight chapters in, so I'm going to be doing, listening to that for the next three weeks. Uh, so I just, yeah, You I don't have to listen to a new book every week. You don't have to listen to a new book every week, no. uh, but I try to make sure that uh, I'm recommend. I, if you. I've if I've been listening to it, I want to make sure that people know that you know, hey, I, I, this is one I've actually listened to, as opposed to one that like I've read or one right. that I read the previous. And say, okay, that is on my wish list. I've got two. I've got one more credit left. I think I'm going to spend it on this one. Uh, so. The one that caught my eye this week, and I've been reading the pages that are available from this on Google Books, uh, it's, uh, it's called Life Stories, Profiles from the New Yorker. Uh, the New Yorker does really great profiles of people. They're part biography, part tutorial on what kind of job they do and how it gets done. Uh, but it's a, it's extremely vivid writing about what's it, what it's like to be this person, what what they find is important and where they are and what they've been doing uh, when it was time for uh, a New Yorker writer to come over and start documenting his life. Uh, and it's a lot, it's a pretty wide collection of different, uh, of, of different people. I'm just going to read from the, from the audible page. You, you got the profiles of Richard Pryor, Marlon Brando, Catherine White, uh, uh, the, the artist Isadora Duncan, uh, right. The one that really got me was a piece called the man who walks on air, which was a profile of Philippe Petit. He was the uh, tightrope rock, tightrope walker most famous for doing a pirate job where he strung a cable between the twin towers of the world trade center when was just nearly being finished and tightrope walked back and forth across the twin towers uh and so it starts off uh, I, I read almost nearly that entire story uh via google books and just starts off with him being so serious about suddenly everyone everyone telling him you should do a tightrope walk across the grand canyon so he made it this project to figure out if there was any way or shape or form he could actually do it and being really discouraged and like finding out exactly how much money he could spend on a plane just to scout places. He was spending days and days and days, and the, 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 the whole start of the piece is when he finally finds this one spot that has exactly the right sort of scale and drama, but also has the technical requirements of, will I be killed doing this? No? Great. Let's talk about that then. Uh, so it's, it's a, it seems like a really great choice because it's, these are, it's sort of a done-in-one sort of collection. Uh, as a collection of about uh, 12 or 14 different little books, it means that if you've got a one-hour commute, you could start it when you pull out of the driveway and finish it by the time you get back home at the end of the day. It's uh, nine hours and 48 minutes. Uh, it was published about uh, 2001. So anybody who might have been born after that, they're not going to be profiled or got famous after that. You will not be finding a Lady Gaga interview uh, in this collection. I would very much like to see what New Yorker would have to say profiling Lady Gaga. 
as probably I'd love to read that. Yeah. We'll see about the hats, I think. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, but so, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed, I, I probably read about two or three chapters of this book by now. And that was enough to sell me on the audio book. I actually, it's probably enough that, you know, when, uh, when I get access to the iBook store, when I get access to uh, that sort of stuff, I'm definitely going to look for this. It seems like also a good one to read. There's so many of these books where I wind up buying two or three editions because I enjoy the audio book and I enjoy the audio book so much that I want to be able to read it. And oftentimes just in reverse, even though I read this book, uh, I suddenly want the ability to listen to it in the car. Uh, so there's, there's probably going to be a lot yeah, of cross that all the time. with this volume, too. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, it, that reminds me, we don't talk about it enough, but you can actually subscribe to an audio version of The New Yorker uh, on audible.com. Um, so th so there's a ton of New Yorker material on uh, audible.com, which is great. Other periodicals, too, New York Times and The Wall Street Journal. Um, th th this is Audible is more than just books. It is a, a large variety of audio content, including yeah. Magazines. I mean, there, there was, uh, one of my favorite podcasts was the Ricky Gervais Show podcast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the, it was so successful for the first two years that they took it behind a paywall, uh, and I never, I really just never really bothered with it. But of course, now it's available as an Audible subscription, and that might be more possible there. Uh, just make sure that when you select your free book or when you select your free credit, there's so many times I came this close to saying, "Wow, that's a great pick," then read closer and saying. Oh, that's actually twenty three minutes, and it costs a dollar thirty. I don't think I want people to use their free pick on a dollar thirty thing. <laughs> yeah, the, I know. The, the, the we don't ever mention time. this. Yeah, but there really <laughs> is some great stuff. You're right. I mean, the dollar ninety five, dollar thirty. Pick something expensive. You really want to stick it to them. <laughs> King James Bible. They're bridge. giving it to you for free. You should take something worth a hundred dollars if you can. <laughs> by Jimmy Stewart. <laughs> Small in, in, the, in the beginning, uh, the the, oh, the oh, world oh. was with uh, <laughs> with, without without form uh, and, uh, and and shape uh, and. Uh, I, 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 uh, and the Lord, <laughs> and you know that oh, they're just killing you. They're just killing you. Oh, I love it. Audible.com slash MacBreak. Get your first book free. It's a great, a really a great choice uh, for people who love to listen. And we know you love to listen, or else why in heaven's name would you still be listening to this? Now, Alex Lindsay is going to give us his pick of the week. Hey, Alex Lindsay, I have a geeky one, and it's free. Geeky pick. I went. I went a little geek today. Don't pick the iPad. <laughs> I almost did. You know, I thought about it. I have to admit, I thought about picking the iPad, and I thought, you know, that you know, I, I'm already known as a little bit of a Mac geek boy, and I was afraid that, uh, you know, no or fanboy, and no one would believe anything I said after that again. <laughs> I don't even have it yet. Um, so no. So this is one was pointed out. Sam at the office pointed this one out to me. I'm still experimenting with it, but it's free, so people should download it because it is so cool. And what it is, it's called Geek Tool, and um, so here's. It solves a problem in a geeky way that I've had for a long time, which is that I want to put stuff on my desktop. I don't want dashboard. Like, I don't want things to show up on my dashboard. I don't want to hit F12 or whatever. I want my schedule. I want maybe some hard drive information. I want images that I'm interested in, live feeds, whatever I want. I want to put it on the desktop. I don't want it to be clickable. I want it to be underneath my icons. I want everything to just kind of operate back there. Um, at, you know, it's a desktop that... Uh, um, that has information that should be in front of me, like what my next appointment is, you know, what my dentist appointment is, yeah. what my yeah. other stuff. You say that because I missed, <laughs> I was supposed to be drilled today and I forgot. So, wait, that's a Freudian forget. Yeah. They need it. We need a new phrase. They've got Freudian slip. We need a Freudian forget. I wouldn't do that before a show. Because anyway, it'd be like, you'd walk in and go, hey, right, right, right. well, as it turned out, yeah, that would have been a bad idea. But I had an 8 a.m., yeah. uh, two, two fillings, 8 a.m. appointment. So anyway, so I want to have this information in there. So what Geek Tool lets you do is it's a preference uh, pane. And you can load images. You can load live. You can have it point to live feeds on the web. You can have it do shell scripts and display those shell scripts um, on your desktop. And it becomes when you... You know, when you click away, when you close the, the, the panel, um, then it just becomes part of your desktop. It's not clickable. It's just, you know, it's kind of, I mean, here's a very rough version of it, but you, there's just stuff, you know, there's, there's some You can show me, there's, but there's no way I can no show can the see people it. No at home. But the point is, is that uh, it's very cool. What you it can does. add, and you can mix and match them. And if you look at some of the examples, people have gone crazy with this thing, with these gorgeous desktops. Now, that, is it live like it'll update? Or yeah, you can have it look at an RSS feed. You can have it look at. But, um, it, but it doesn't, it's kind of static updating, right? You can, no, you can tell it how often you want it to update. Okay. You know, and you can have a look at a live camera. I I haven't gotten it working with a live camera yet, but you're supposed to be able to look at it. it Sam, and how you how you could have it update every 15 seconds or something, or every zero seconds, or right. one second, or whatever. But the point is, like for instance, I could have it look at my iCal so that I could have my my schedule and everything else, and I can work on the design of it. I can I can figure out how I want it to be designed so that it looks nice on my desktop. Uh, and this is something that other people have made some kind of basic tools that do this. 
Um, but I haven't found anything that really just was part of my desktop. I didn't have to think about it. It wasn't anything extra, and I can work on it and figure out what I want to do. So I just started playing with it, um, and it's um, it's called it's by uh, Tinso T Y N S O E dot org, uh, and they they do a bunch of other cool stuff too. But um, but this is. Uh, uh, geek tool um, is the thing that uh, I just think <laughs> solves a bunch of problems. It's still a little geeky. You have to roll up your sleeves and play with it a little bit to get what you want. Uh, uh, but it's um, and we're definitely going to cover this more in a Mac break dev because it's just like well, oh. as long as you're going to do that, I'm going to. Uh, Josh Brown in our chat room has mentioned this site, which you might want to add to that list. It's uh, from Mac OS Geeklets. 10 Tips in the UK. Mac OS X Tips UK slash Geeklets. These are. A variety of different things you can use with Geek Perfect. Tool, like list currently online Skype contests, display uh, lyrics from the track being played in iTunes, display ping time to a server, Facebook news feed, list tasks from things.app. I mean, there's quite a few yeah. handy little dandy things here. You don't have to build it up yourself. Right. So is it ter you use terminal commands to... Uh, you can do terminal commands. But 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 Or you okay. can have it look at an image, or you can have it point to something. You know, there's a couple different ways of... A lot of it's terminal based, right? Um, but it's uh, it's really slick, you know. That's, that's I mean that's and, uh, and 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 as I said, it is really a geek tool. Yeah, it's it's geeky. And so for those of you who like to geek out with your Mac, this is something that <laughs> is. Uh, and and what I'm looking at is working on like Quartz Composer stuff that I can do cool things with it and have it be looking at RSS and have it feed back in and you know so it'll and it'll look at files on your desktop. So if those things change, it could change, you know. So uh, anyway, geek tool. Check it out. From projects.tynsoe.org. But if you do a Google for Geek Tool, you'll, it's the first thing. It's the first thing that shows up. I feel lucky. Don McAllister from Screencasts Online. Okay, well, this one is uh, its an iPhone app, but it's going to be really useful for the iPad. It was uh, at one point out by my friend Wally over in Canada. And what it is, basically, I mean, we've all got sort of video collections. And, and this alludes back to a point that uh, was made before, that, you know, conversion is always an issue um, with, with video. So, you know, I, I like to have big high resolution videos for my Apple TV or to, in fact, I've got a Mac Mini now because it was such a pain uh, having different media formats. Um, I ended up with a Mac Mini Media Center to play, you know, lots of different types of, uh, of video formats on my large screen TV. But if you want to play on your iPhone, you have to convert. Uh, you have to downsize it. If it's at high resolution, you have to downsize it. And if you've got MKV files or AVI files, you know, all the different file formats that the iPhone won't, um, won't work with, uh, you have to convert it to get onto your iPhone. Uh, well, there's this application that uh, it's in two parts. There's an iPhone app, and there's also um, an app that runs on your Mac uh, called Air Video. And it's really clever. It's very, very, uh, and it works really, really well. Basically, what you do, you, you put the um, Air Video server on your Mac where your media is, or you point it at your media files, and then you install the, the iPhone application. And what it does, it allows you to, well, one, if you want to convert the files, it will actually convert it. You can use your iPhone to start off a conversion process, and it will convert the files so you can play them on your iPhone. But the really neat thing is that it will actually stream, and it will do live streaming of the file, even if it's not in the format that the iPhone natively supports. So you could have an MKV file, uh, a 1080p MKV file sitting on your hard disk on your Mac. You use uh, a video on your iPhone and you get it to live stream and it, it buffers. It takes about 10 or 15 seconds to start. But once it starts live converting, you, it will actually output that to your iPhone or your iPad. And you can watch it and you can watch the whole movie right the way through. There's, there's no, other than that 10 or 15 second pause while it converts the first bit, it will actually convert the lot and stream at the same time. It's really clever. Very cool. Give me the mm. URL again, or I guess right, the URL, well, it's, but um, it's an iPhone app, so yeah, the name. Yeah, it's by uh, InMethod.com. So if you go to their website at www.InMethod.com slash dash video, um, you'll see there, I'll give you a link to the iTunes store. I think it's only, there's a free version. I'm not sure the limitations are on the free version, but the uh, the full-blown application is only, uh, I think it's $2.99, I think, around that, that area. It's not very expensive. Um, and it will export to like 640 by 480. So you can have a 1080p movie on your hard disk and it will stream that live convert at the same time. And you can watch it on your, your iPhone at 640 by 360. And the picture quality is fantastic. There's no latency. It works really well. That's slick. It's very good. Very good. I say you can convert if you want. So you can start a conversion job and it will convert the whole thing. But this live conversion, you need to have an Intel Mac for it to do and a fairly speedy one as well for it to do the live conversion but it will convert on the fly and stream it as well at the same time. 
So you can actually be sitting at your TV and not want to watch the TV or your better half is watching the TV. Get your iPad, connect to your media device. In fact, it, it's, it shows you the folder structure on your Mac. So you can see all the folders where you have all your media. Uh, pick a piece of media, say it's a 720p video, uh, tap that and uh, you have an option to start conversion, start streaming or copy it to iTunes as well. It will even expose your iTunes playlists. So if you've got iTunes video, videos in iTunes as playlists, you can access those as well. Uh, click live convert, wait 10 or 15 seconds and then we'll actually start streaming to your, to your iPad. Very good. Neat. Can it stream? It can't stream live video though. To your iPod. Um, no, it's, it's, it's normally pre-recorded media that you have on your hard disk. I'm not sure about the live stuff. I, I, I would doubt it. Okay. I wanted to do the first iPad application pick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think we Go should on. leave that to Andy. I've been alive forever, <laughs> and I wrote the very first app. I put the code and the user interface together. This credit goes to Erica Sedun once again. She's the great uh, developer who writes for the uh, unofficial Apple weblog and, uh, and has been on the show before. She uh, noted that there is a, um, an iPhone application called Neon Wallpaper Backgrounds Creator, which uh, if, you're, if you're an iPhone user, you probably know about, 99 cents for this. And the folks at uh, Neon have announced, yes, they are going to have a version to create wallpaper for your iPad. So, in fact, they've posted a video on YouTube, quite a beautiful video on uh, YouTube, showing... Now, remember, this is the iPad's simulator interface, not the actual interface. You, uh, It's kind of got a uh, an interesting interface, kind of like a slot machine where you pick colors, fonts, styles, and background. Uh, you can do it randomly or you can do it by hand. You can add your own images. You can rotate it, change the font size, the line wrap, and so forth. It will create an image for your wallpaper. Uh, you can do dynamic wallpaper as well. I don't know what that means, but uh, we'll have to find out. And uh, put a picture or a logo on it. So, of course, we'll be doing the Twit logo wallpaper for the iPad very quickly. Um, but this will be out uh, 99 cents on the iPhone, so I presume uh, this will be available uh, day of on Saturday, 99 cents as well. And, you know, it's one thing to change the wallpaper on the iPhone. I don't feel too, you know, I just put a picture there. But I guess if you want to do, you know, your iPad, it's a lot more space. There's a lot more wallpaper there. So it might be kind of fun to have uh, a little bit more um, control over that. And maybe, Andy, you could have one that says something like, this is not an iPad this is only an amazing simulation. Uh, so what, what could have been my pick of the week? Uh, I have a friend who who does a uh, who's a really good like uh, sewer and, and and seamstress, and so she uh, took my she took my fake iPad and built me a. I, I told her that she said that she she was making a sleeve for the iPad that she had ordered, and I said what you really need to do is killer feature for this thing. Make sure there's like a pouch on the back of it that's exactly the right size for a MiFi because most a lot of the Wi-Fi users are going to be using both of those things, and so. I took this over for a fitting the other day, uh, and I and she said, "Well, she, my machine can also can also do uh, uh, can also do embroidery. So, do you want me to literally have it embroidered? This is not contained an iPad. <laughs> that would be like, good. <laughs> it could be a very Dadaistic. <laughs> this is not an iPad. Ceci, ce n'est pas un iPad. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the pick of the week from Mister Andy Anako of the Chicago Sun Times. Ah, well, uh, I." occasionally do interviews that I then have to transcribe uh, and that is the absolute most soul-sucking thing ever because the only thing worse than having to type a lot without thinking is having to listen to your own voice and then have to, for a half hour and an hour and have to think. Uh, so uh, I'm going to recommend two different tools that I came across, uh, two and a half actually. Uh, one is a service that someone recommended to me called We Scribe It. It's called We is re, re, We Scribe It dot com, where it's a transcription service. You just email a file to them, and they will send back to you a word file with a complete transcript of uh, of the entire file. Uh, and their rate is uh, uh, one cent, a, a penny a word normally. Uh, so if you have a uh, sixty minute recording, they have a, a sample table here. It will cost you fifty four dollars and fifty six cents to have a complete transcript. Yeah, but think about the idea of I'm finished with the interview, I email this to the service, I go out to dinner, I come back and the transcription is done. 
uh, in, in many situations, getting 54, you know, getting getting that all that work done for me and being able to come home from dinner and be ready to start editing this and start uh, writing about it, uh, that might be an interesting uh, proposition for me. Uh, so the other cool thing is that people might think, well, well how about you use Max Speech's uh, dictation tool, which often works. Uh, unfortunately, when you have when you're doing a phone interview, the phone quality is not good enough to do that kind of automatic transcription. Also multiple voices is also a problem. So this one, you can have three people in a conference call and they will give you a transcript of the entire conversation all three ways. I haven't used it myself, but you better believe that I've bookmarked it because I believe that, I'm sure that at some point in the future, there's going to be a time where I don't think, youch, 60 bucks to transcribe this interview. I'm going to think, great, I can actually get this done and post it by tomorrow rather than having to wait two days for me to have time to go through all this thing. Um, what I uh, I did instead, I don't I, I didn't want to spend sixty bucks, so I started looking for tools for trans, that help you transcribe conversations, and I found this really good app in uh, Google Code, a free app called Transcriptions. It is a word processor that's designed explicitly for transcribing video and audio. Uh, you have a one window interface in which you can actually have the video, even if it's a video, video playing uh, in one pane of the window. You have keyboard shortcuts that will have you sort of stutter stop the playback. So you can catch up as you type it. Uh, I believe it also supports uh, slowing down the speed so that you can keep it can go down to a speed that you can accommodate. Uh, and I thought it was very, very easy. Some of the shortcuts have to be sort of obtuse. I believe that's uh, to playback controls are control one, control two, control three, uh, just to keep the regular command keys uh, free for other things. Uh, uh, the and so I found that really, really useful. And then, of course, now this, I'm going to go, we have to do a callback to an earlier, uh, to an earlier recommendation. I, I, I use transcriptions long enough to verify that, yes, it does work. Yes, it does work. Great, great. So let's just take a break and then come back and start tackling this job. And in the meantime, someone reminded me that Scrivener actually does have, my favorite word processor, has a transcription feature built in. Of course it you does. Simply you simply drag the MP3 file into your project. It will open in a, in a, in a split pane your window. There are simple keyboard shortcuts to control playback, and you get it done and dusted. So that's, of course, what I did instead. So uh, a, a, a triple a, a triple recommendation. If you don't have uh, if you don't have uh, Scrivener transcriptions, give that a give that a try. I think it's a really wonderfully done uh, done solution. And if you want to do nothing whatsoever, then pay a penny a word and go to these other guys. Great. Or, uh, well, there you go. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of solutions to this. We, you know, it's funny. Uh, uh, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say this or not. I guess I'll say it. We, uh, we have uh, friends at a company called Phone Tag. They spent, I don't know what, a huge amount of money they donated to uh, uh, Charity Water to get an ad on Twit, you know, six months ago or whatever, and with Jason Calacanis. And uh, we've been talking ever since. And when they were at CES, they announced that they are going to do a transcription service for conference calls that I think is going to be free. I'm not sure. But anyway, they've, they've offered it to us. But the idea is you use one of their conference calling services. I think ZipDX is the first. And it will automatically be transcribed for you. And what's interesting, the thing I thought was interesting, is the way they're doing it, th they have a service phone tag that transcribes your voicemail. So they already have um, people somewhere, I don't know, in India or somewhere, doing transcriptions of short things. So what they're going to do is take longer things and farm them out <laughs> like 140 characters at a time. <laughs> And, 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 and isn't that clever? So nobody's doing the whole thing, which is onerous, but they're doing a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. And then I think that to, val to validate it, they're going to have two or three people do the same thing and then and they can do this for free? have a vote. It's pretty cheap because you use it, things like Amazon Mechanical Turk. Mm -hmm. I, that's interesting. It's an interesting also, idea. It also, it also solves one of the problems that I would have with using that transcription service, which is that you know, the, the interview that I did was with uh, Marvel right. and DC Comics about the digital strategy. That's perfectly fine, but oftentimes you're doing something that has to be kept completely confidential, and you know, you, that, that so you're out there. I'm, I'm not sure if what could happen in a 140 word snippet or, or, or five second snippet that would compromise things, but that's that's an interesting idea. I figure at some point they're going to have to charge, but it may be that they charge the conference call provider. And, you know, or something like that. Anyways, right. you can do it now uh, with a company called ZipDX. So we spend uh, good money on transcriptions. Yeah, it's very ex Well, 55 bucks is actually not that much for an hour. So it is. It's expensive. We actually have uh, a company doing our transcriptions, uh, uh, pods in print, do transcriptions for a number of uh, shows for us. They, they, do, they specialize in podcasts. Right. But what I would really like, and that's what this will provide, is real-time transcription, which we could then use as closed captioning or kind of right. store which would be very cool. So anyway, so I, I don't know what the latest is with that phone tag thing. Um, I'll find out. I don't know if it's free, but ZipDX.com is currently offering it 
Looks very nice. Yeah. Isn't that cool? All right. Uh, did we all do picks? I think we did. Mm-hmm. I, I think we are ready to say goodnight to everyone on our final, final iPad free. Pre, Pre-iPad. Evidently, there, there might be some choices. Or there might be some um, picks next week related to <laughs> the iPad. <laughs> but I got the first one. <laughs> I got the first one. Well, and be, we'll and because, the, yeah. One of us has got to pick the iPad. You can't pick. You can't pick the apps for the iPad without picking the. Can iPad. we all? Well, you someone's know, gonna have to be the fall guy. And we probably shouldn't pick it till it comes out and we've played with it. So next Tuesday we will have played with it for four days. We'll have a better idea, and then we can see if we actually pick it. Right. And you know we could do. You pick the four ninety nine one. I'll pick the five ninety one nine one. Andy can pick the six ninety nine one. You already picked the top of the line. Two of those. Yeah. See, I don't need the. I got the cheapest so one. You can talk about the cheapest we'll one. Talk, talk we'll talk. We'll talk about, about why. You know who use case. I just turned the no, dial up. Don't forget though, Leo, that all those people outside the U.S. It's so U.S. Sorry. only launch. So you know everybody else in the rest of the world is so a, a looking, salivating at what's going on. So, so. We'll, we'll we'll have you back on, and you can talk about what it's like to watch us play with. It. Well, <laughs> actually, I'm getting one on Saturday. Aha! Aha! So don't come crying to me, Don yeah, McAllister. You can tell no, us what it's like in the, in the atmosphere. Else. No, uh, I'm I'm not insensitive to this. In fact, it's a big problem for us for a lot of things. Even the Audible ads sometimes is that people listen and we 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 sell this stuff, mm-hmm. you know, so highly, and then they go, but I can't get one. Yeah, well, it just so happens that I booked um, a vacation um, back in October, I think, even before the iPad was announced, and it just so happened it just fell. It was to New York, and it just so happens that right bang in the middle of the four or five days we're there mm-hmm. is the launch day. So I'm actually going to be down at Fifth Avenue store picking. I'm picking two up. Sure. I'm actually giving them the place. Sure. That's what you told your wife. Uh-huh. <laughs> just so happens. Honestly. Honestly. Complete honestly, coincidence. Honestly. Remember, time. honey, we have to talk about the iPad during every meal to make this deductible. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you so much for being here. We hope you will tune in next week. Uh, We are going to do a little special iPad coverage, not the 24 hours of iPad that we did for the iPhone 3G launch. Um, Because I don't think there'll be big lines because most people will do like I did and you did, which is just say, deliver it to me on April 3rd. Why wait in line, right? Right. So, uh, however, I do know uh, Robert Scoble tells me that there will be a party out front of the Palo Alto uh, Apple store. It's called Steve Jobs Apple Store. The that's Steve where he lives, Jobs. The Steve Apple. Store. Uh, in the past, at iPhone launches, Wozniak showed up, Bill Hertzfeld, or Andy Hertzfeld, uh, Bill Atkinson. I mean, well-known names in the Apple community have shown up just to be part of the excitement. So we're going to send... I'm not going to go. I thought I'd, I thought I'd uh, take, a, take a, uh, a break on this one and send Colleen and Eric Lanigan, who's our one of our video editors, really great young guy, a couple of young people, a couple of young people. We're oh, going to send we're them. those whippersnappers down. They can get up early. <laughs> we're going to send them with the Ustream live pack and that we used at uh, South by Southwest, the camera on a pole. <laughs> Eric will be oh, our... No, we... Action Twit Mobile One. <laughs> Twit Mobile One will be on the scene. From the Action Twit Mobile One. So, <laughs> so they're going to go there. I don't know what time, probably in the afternoon. But I told them, start broadcasting if there's something going on. Continue to broadcast until it gets deadly dull. And uh, so that could be all night. It could be four minutes. We don't know. <laughs> we, I just don't know. Yeah. Uh, but at least we'll, we'll do that. And that will be on the air uh, Friday night. Um, and I, I, watch the uh, schedule, the calendar, uh, at live.twit.tv for a start time. Because I don't know yet what the start time will be. And we will, uh, we'll put that up there. We'll update that as soon as we figure that out. But uh, Colleen and Eric will be covering... Um, the iPad launch. Thank you all for being here. We will see you. Oh, and we have video now of the show, by the way. You can subscribe in iTunes. Please do. Search for Mac Break Weekly in iTunes, and there's now high-quality and low-quality uh, H.264 video suitable for iPad, iPhone, it's on YouTube too. MacBook. It's also on YouTube, youtube.com slash twit in the Mac Break Weekly channel. Uh, and, of course, audio versions continue to be available. Uh, you just go to twit.tv, and uh, you'll find it all there. Thank you all for being here. We'll see you next time. Now, get back to work. Break time is over.